accomplished the evaluation form for each module. It is shared already for modules one and two, and it will be posted for modules three and three. It will be posted by your research coordinators in your respective group chat and in the chat box here. Let us now start with an invocation and the singing of the national anthem at the CNSC. Our Heavenly Father, the fount of all goodness and grace, the cause of wisdom, the source of intelligence, we welcome you, O Lord, to this auspicious gathering of your beloved, who continuously give you thanks for every opportunity to learn something new and become fruitful to the works of your creation. We humbly come to you, not because we are worthy, but because we find ourselves in need of you, who is our strength and our hope, to continue despite the challenges we face in health, prosperity, and our solidarity with one another. We pray that today's gathering made possible by the grace of advancements in technology and social media, become successful in its endeavors so we can offer it back to you as our humble offering to honor you, glorify you, and love you through our deeper connection with everyone. May we find bliss in today's session and become more productive children and co-creators of the earth. This we ask and pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas.
our OIC president, vice presidents, our deans and directors, research coordinators, faculty researchers, and of course, who got members joining us today. Isang magandang magandang umaga po muli sa inyong lahat. Our first day of doing ethnography seminar workshop was truly really productive and information filled. Our esteemed resource speakers, all from UGAT or the Anthropological Association of the Philippines, had brought us back to the basics of ethnography, has shown us its general picture and its principles. They generously share their personal real life experiences in doing immersion and in conducting their actual research undertaking. They also liberally shared practical tips to facilitate and make an interesting and meaningful research output. Along their discussions, they tackled the importance of ethnography in providing deep holistic insights into people's cultures, views and activities, and the nature of the environment they live. They also emphasized that ethnographic research must be conducted in an ethical manner with proper care and attention to the research participants, bearing in mind, of course, their best interest, and that the avoidance of damage with fully informed consent and the requirement for privacy and confidentiality are the primary ethical problems that researchers must examine and always put into consideration. The relevance of enjoying what you are doing as a researcher was underlined during their conversations. They also readily answered questions and posted questions posted during the question and answer part of the seminar. Consequently, they encouraged participants to make efforts to broaden their areas of interest, to engage in actual field work experiences in order to produce and publish ethnographic research. With that, we are now set to listen to our resource speakers for today. Allow me to introduce our resource speakers for today. We have two resource speakers for module three, the indigenous people of the Philippines. So our first resource speaker is Maria F. Mahas. Maria is the professor at the, is a professor at the University of the Philippines Diliman Department of Anthropology. Her fieldwork has been on coastal and small-scale fishing communities in Batanes and Samal Island. She has also investigated the phenomenon of digitized scandals and media piracy, as well as the history of Philippine anthropology. She was president of Bugat in 2014 and 2017. And uh, the second resource speaker is Jesse Varquez. Jesse is a faculty member of the Behavioral, Behavioral Sciences Department at the De La Salle University, Manila, and the executive director of Bugat. He obtained his BA, Magna Cum Laude, and MA degrees in anthropology at UP Diliman. He is currently doing his PhD at the University of Manitoba in Canada. His research broadly explores on human environment relations and livelihood strategies. Let us all welcome our two resource speakers for module three on indigenous people of the Philippines, Maria Mangahas and Jesse. Go ahead, Jesse and Maria. I'm just sharing screen. Okay, so I'm the first, <clears throat> I'm having the first session. Okay, so I tried to put together, good morning everyone. I tried to put together a um, presentation on IPs in the Philippines and 
I ended up with a lot of maps. <clears throat> uh, sometimes I teach peoples of the Philippines in UP and I always learn a lot. There's just too much material. And I found that the more I went backwards in time his, into history, the more things start to make sense. So actually one of my um, conclusions is that aside from ethnography, we should really do ethno history. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I wanted to begin by sharing this. Uh, it's actually a postcard of somebody, I don't know if you're familiar, but I wanted to ask people to just give me words, whatever it brings to mind. This is a, an indigenous person and this is supposedly what he said. So you can read it and you can uh, maybe in the chat box suggest just whatever associations come to your mind <clears throat> for, uh, for three minutes. Maybe we can just fill up this square and I want to see what what you're thinking of when you hear the word or the phrase indigenous peoples. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I guess Jesse Bakame, oops, sorry. I, I just realized I cannot write. <laughs> when I write things down, it moves to the next slide. <laughs> sorry, hindi pala siya uh, parang jump board. Okay, so anyway, let's just fill in the chat box. Um, what, words do you, what words would you like to write? Anything, let's <clears throat> tapang, <laughs> kalinangan. Thank you, Jesse. So by the way, uh, who is not familiar with Pakling Dulag, marginalized? So does uh, everybody know him? <clears throat> Minority. Okay, right. Kakisigan. Okay. Uh huh. Bayani. Okay. Our participants can use the reaction function and the reaction because there are thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. Jesse, I don't know where to find that. In, in the reaction button, it should be in the far right. Wala eh. Wala akong reactions. Oops. <laughs> oh dear, sorry, sorry. Okay, so wala na, katapangan, wow. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was Makli. The, the, the thing is that somebody has commented what he said, parang sinabi din siya ng American Indian, so it's not, the other, the other thing about indigenous peoples is there's this uh, global rights movement, indigenous peoples rights movement. <clears throat> they have shared, shared issues. Okay, so I'll add some words from here. There seems to be a lot of land.
Okay. So, um, sige, while you add some more words, I'm curious to see what you're thinking of. Uh, if Just to briefly say who this guy is, si Makling Dulag ay Kalinga. Uh, he was involved in the Chico River Dam struggle in the time of Marcos. There was a World Bank project. And uh, he, he, he stood in the way of it. He, he was very, very <clears throat> matapang is, I guess, a good word. And uh, in the end, we're not sure why the project was uh, not continued. <clears throat> Um, and in the, I think in the words he speaks here, it's also, whoops, it's also clarify, clar clearly said, uh, there's a very different perspective, an, an, uh, another way of looking at, for example, land. And it's comparing um, the way they understand that you can use the land if you work it, the fruits of your labor go to you from of your sweat. And also it has something to do with, with um, others who have gone before. And in contrast to the idea of titling the land. <clears throat> so maraming, uh, actually it's been all about land, <clears throat> the movement of, for the IPs. Oops, <laughs> okay. Wait, I have to clear my screen. Okay, so, um, at the same time, uh, it's not so simple. <laughs> so, madam, yah kung na discovered na problems with with uh, making use of the notion of of what is indigenous. So, I, so I didn't see a lot of what I was expecting to come out here. I just okay. So here, the terms we're looking at are indigenous and people, and these two are very significant terms. <clears throat> so indigenous means um, nauna, because the next, the not indigenous are those who arrived from somewhere else <clears throat> after them. So it's about time, priority in time, and being first. And then it's also connected to space. <clears throat> so that's where the land comes in, and supposedly being attached to a place. Then um, in Ypra also, it's, it's not only about being there first and having things like sacred sites, but also the experience of being colonized and resisting it so that there's more continuity with before colonization. <clears throat> and then in the process, they became a minority, which I saw your word. <clears throat> but when this comes up, when this is emphasized, the experience side recently na sa separate yung indigeneity from time and space so you can be indigenous because you you have this experience even if you're no longer in the place so so uh, for example if you were displaced and you're now somewhere else kasama yun sa definition ng indigenous people indigenous ka pa rin kahit nasa ibang lugar ka na. and that's that's a bit <clears throat> Um, hard to hard to figure it out now. Hard to hard to uh, deploy. It, it makes it um, it makes it. What is it for? No, because if you're still indigenous but you're somewhere else, and you have rights based on indigeneity, how do you how do you um, what are you asking for? So indigeneity is very much connected to politics, basically identity politics. <clears throat> so the other thing about being indigenous is you might have a, and being a people, so peoples naman, peoples are distinct from other peoples and it can be, it's based on culture. This can be because you have a different religion or belief system. It can be a, a, a different, of course, usually it's a different language. It can be anything. It can be food, clothing, uh, justice system, um, political structure. <clears throat> so anything um, that makes one group of people distinct and able to possess their identity makes you call the people. And the word people has a, a very <clears throat> political 
um, connotation because peoples have rights, rights to recognition and rights to self-determination as a distinct group. And ultimately you might ask for sovereignty, which means to be recognized as a nation separately. And so, um, actually, okay, so as you can imagine, uh, this is actually the story of indigenous peoples is connected to the story of nations and uh, the narratives we make of modern nations. How did, how are the modern nations, they challenge the, the modern nations that we belong to and we see in the world today. <clears throat> Meron din, another thing about the, the, the people who are known as IP is that they have experienced labels, being labeled, and there are all these pejorative connotations. So, um, um, by the way, the, word of, the term indigenous people is recent. So, for example, 20 or 30 years ago, more than 20, maybe 40 years ago, nobody was wielding the term IP. But uh, it's, it has come to be more prevalent because it has that political aspect because you, a, a people have rights. <clears throat> and uh, before that, it was cultural communities or tribal groups <clears throat> or some of the phrases. So, whoops, what happened? Okay, so there have been pejorative connotations to the groups that are identifying as IP today. Terms like this, primitive, savage, wild, barbaric, uncivilized, tribal, um, they don't sound good. <laughs> but in anthropology, these have also been used as neutral terms. They, they mean they are used to contrast with um, westernized peoples and they have not necessarily been utilized in pejorative ways. Not all, not necessarily, but often yes, and more often popularly. Parang pag sinabing primitive, savage, etc. There's some deficiency, like your values are not not up to the what the majority feels are correct, or there's this, or usually they're not um, in in the school system, or they were not. <clears throat> May mga ganito, parang kulang sa rationality, parang kailangan turuan, alagaan, or they're closer to nature, some have, have tails daw, or they're like children. So the Americans use this phrase, little brown brother. Um, they belong to the little tradition, which means not big traditions like Christianity, Islam, but little ones which are animist and very localized. Um, they wear no clothes, no, don't have the same technology. So parang may evolutionary ladder ng lahat ng sangkatauhan at nasa mababang lugar sila, so-called backward pagan. Therefore, they should be converted. They're frozen in time, a window to the past. So all of these are, um, of course, problematic. <clears throat> and from the point of view of the state, nakakairita sila because they resist the state or they're evasive of the state. And basically, they're just different from the dominant point of view. In our particular case, uh, the, the, the no, these kinds of, of um, stereotypes were the justification for American colonialism or imperialism taking over of uh, when America, because they have been a colonial subject themselves, it's not in their constitution to become a colonial power, but they justified it. The rationale was kasi kawawa naman yung little brown brother. And this is a depiction of the little brown brother. Ganito yung popular imagination nila. Parang bata and brown. And uh, so parang, will he let us fall over the cliff or dapat, dapat daw there's a paternalistic patronizing um, responsibility or uh, paternalistic responsibility to take care of the Philippines and promise them independence 
the only way they could they could um, take on the role of colonizer was to promise independence pag naturuan na. So in fact, um, this the narrative of having different groups of people who are who are not equal or um, as good as in some way uh, the ideal <clears throat> has been uh, very much used in our history. Um, okay, so mabilis na lang kasi ang dami kong slides. Sa kabila nito, IPs are um, given value and recognition, Rec uh, in, especially in terms of their struggle against being displaced, land grab, um, against being marginalized, as you mentioned, minor being minorities, being more vulnerable, for example, to violence in this context of land grabbing. Um, <clears throat> in general, uh, there's this term development ag aggression, which, which uh, parang says basically that mas mahalaga yung ibang developed compared to their needs or compared to the ways they want, want to use their land. Certain, certain other ways of using land might have priorities such as uh, electricity, dam projects, for example. So kaya nagkaroon ng, uh, mal naging malakas din yung indigenous people's rights movement. Uh, because basically it's, it's a way of Yung ibig sabihin ng underclass in, in the class struggle, hindi sila kasali sa class struggle. So ang approach sa kanila, genocide. Pag wala na lang sila, wala ng gulo, the land can be used. They don't, have, they don't have the power as workers. They're not so necessary. They're more of panggulo. So, so uh, yung nangyayari sa kanila is they tend to be vulnerable to, to things like genocide. Okay. Um, then on the other hand, they've been appreciated for, for the value, eco economic value that you can generate because they have this difference about them. So tourist attraction, sila, ethnic, sila. Um, it's a, they have designs that are distinct, um, appropriation of their cultural know-how. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, in terms of becoming part of the market, ngayon pumapasok sila as artisans. <clears throat> okay, so alimbawa yung um, uh, high fashion na ginawa ng bagobo, halimbawa. Okay. Uh, so, and then also there's value given to what they know as heritage, their indigenous knowledge and wisdom because of being indigenous or having this long relationship with a particular place and an ecosystem. Um, and then all of the markers of identity which are expressed in arts and crafts, textiles, etc. And uh, oral traditions like epics, long narratives that are uh, literary, also literary um, magnum opuses, but they're very special creations of, of a community, <clears throat> communally held knowledge. So, nagkaroon ng gamaba halimbawa, gawad manlilikha ng bayan, which recognizes them as parang national artists. This is off. This is uh, a law. Okay. Doon naman sa, sa IPRA, so if the IPRA as a law was a response to, supposedly is part of the outcome of the rights movement, nagkaroon ng Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act. And under that, you have to secure things like free prior and informed consent before you um, uh, do research, or if you would like to seek so they have control over the resources, but sorry, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, the outcome of it is ideally the CADTI or the Certificate of Ancestral Domain, 
the recognition of their entitlement to ancestral domain. And so uh, it's supposedly something that um, now instead of them being seen as squatters like how Makling Dulag or the Kalinga were being characterized before, now they would be seen as already having title to land even if they don't have titles. And this is about recognizing those, those, those entitled, that entitlement. Uh, and because of that, if you want to make use of resources within the ancestral domain, you have to negotiate for, in, for consent. And if you want to get um, anything else, including do research, this is a very major aspect of um, implication of that law. The other thing is it also makes the indigenous peoples responsible. Parang the, con the condition of the law is dahil binibigyan sila ng entitlement dahil pangangalagaan nila yung kapaligiran. So this is the Ancestral Domain Sustainable Development Plan or something like that, which has to be written up. And uh, more recently, there's a move for a uh, Wait, I can't remember the, the acronym now, but it has to do with areas within the ancestral domain na dapat conserved at hiwalay talaga. Kasi parang kulang pa yung, yung ito para ma-protectionan yung, yung ibang part. So the, the, the movement is connected to the environmental benefits that uh, they are supposed to be giving as indigenous peoples. <clears throat> Okay, so because of this, now we have a strange situation where to be indigenous is a new kind of modernity. To be indigenous, you have to prove it. Because if you go through this process of Kadi, you have to show that you have, um, you have to show the numbers, you have to get, you have to parang map your area, you have to have a, endorsements, parang you have to get the experts to agree na yes, you are indigenous. You don't just say I'm indigenous, but you have to go through a whole process <laughs> until it's, it's, a, it's proven. And that's, that's when it becomes the case. So parang uh, the uh, IP has become all the more subject to the state, to the, the state as the guarantor of their, their rights. And on the converse of that, from the par part of the people, who are claiming to be IP, pwede silang magkaroon ng strategic essentialism na they claim na, ah, kasi talagang sacred yan para sa amin, or this is really, really how it is to be a, a native, ganyan. You know, we have these rituals, ganyan, ganyan. And it might be more pronounced than before <laughs> Ipra. <laughs> okay, so parang dumami yung ritual, dumami yung... Um, um, performance of ethnicity and of indigeneity um, because there is a strategic agenda from the perspective of the, of the IP. And then uh, the, the other strange thing about the present is you also have planetary indigeneity kasi kahit nasa US ka pero you are uh, Rohingya, for example, na, in, na naging diaspora community ka doon dahil kinakawawa ka sa Myanmar, you're still indigenous. So you have a, a planetary indigeneity. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, so, so I, as, as I said, I think uh, we can understand indigeneity in the Philippines if we go back. And uh, so that goes back to the encounter between Magellan and the islands which led to the conquest of, of us by Spain, so that by a century later, <laughs> this comes from uh, the Murillo Velarde map of 1734, you have this, these are the peoples of the Philippines, according to the map. So you have uh, a lot of kinds of peoples. Dito sa, halimbawa, may mga mixes, may mga mestizos. And these actually are probably a mix of Spanish and, and uh, what they call Indio. This guy is probably a Malay, Merdeka, and this guy is Japanese. So actually, uh, in 1730s, 
we were the center of globalization, Manila was, because of the galleon trade. And so there were so many kinds of people in Manila. It was very cosmopolitan. So in the other parang small vin vignettes beside the map, he, show, he also shows all these other nationalities that were in Manila at the time. And so I, I took out this, this um, to show you some of them. So in, meron dito ang Espanyol, okay? So ito, hindi siya, so hindi siya indigenous sa atin kasi Espanyol siya. But this guy is Criollo, which actually probably refers to the Espanyol born in the Philippines. Ito yung mga insulares. <clears throat> Itong Negro Atizado Criollo de la Terra. So, so he was, um, he was a born here European. Then you have these Indios playing with the roosters, and you have the Aitas or Cimarones del Monte, which Cimarron, I googled it, it means parang nag-escape ka, bumalik ka sa bundok. Parang mga slaves na nag-escape. Yun yung connotation. But I think sa atin yung Cimarron, they, they tried to reduce them, to Christianize them, but they ran back to the mountains. Here on the other side, you can see that there was a significant population of Chinese. So ito yung non-indigenous din sila na maraming trabaho for the, for the, oops, sorry, for where we are. Oops, where am I? Um, there's a Christian and Chinese and this one is not. This is a fisherman and this is a cargador. Tapos may mga people from Africa. Ito yung mga kafre. So, nandito nang galing yung folklore ng mga kapre na, nas, na nagsisigarilyo sa, sa puno. And these are other, I cannot see it because the, these are, I cannot read what it says kasi natatakban siya ng participants. Anyway, these are other nationalities pa. <clears throat> I, I, I was looking for a picture I was, last minute, I couldn't find it. I wanted to put here the Indios Bravo. So by, by turn of the century, these are what the natives look like, sorry. And I have, I have a quiz question. What do you think is the ethnic identity of these women here in the picture? Meron bang... You can unmute siguro or, or try in the chat box. San, taga saan itong, oops, sorry. Taga saan itong mga babae dito sa kanan? <clears throat> Sige na. Hindi ako pa rin sumagot. <laughs> Kung walang sasagot, si Jesse na lang. Siya ay ang mga taga-bihol. Ah, <laughs> Dr. Joe, Joe kayo. Siya kasi, siya kasi kami. <laughs> Uh, guess, guess. Can you guess? Wala. So, hindi taga Bicol? No. Okay, guess na lang, Jesse. <laughs> Merong guesses. Merong guesses na lang sa chat. Sige, can you read them? I think so. Uh, what now? Guess na agta, may nagsabing batanes, may nagsabing batanes. Okay, yeah. So, Batanes. Mga Ibatan sila. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> but there's oh, no... <laughs> Ibatan sila. You can tell because this characteristic uh, suit, it's for the sun. Lahat sila meron. No? So, sa Batanes talaga na, nakikita yan. But otherwise, there's no big difference in terms of dress, I think, between the Ibatans and the Manila. This India de Manila. There's really no big difference. However, the strange thing is that the Ivatans are considered indigenous people in our bureaucratic framework. Meron silang NCIP doon. But the natives of Manila are not. But uh, actually, the Spanish um, colonial impact on the Ivatans was probably very similar to the, to the, the transformation of the and Uh, 
Um, they were Christianized by the Dominicans and were all experienced other groups of people. Therefore, it's really the bureaucratic of the Philippines, which is the one that, that, that is determining who is IP. My internet connection. Okay, <laughs> nag freeze kayo. <laughs> okay, so you dapat siguro magtanggal muna ako ng video kasi mahina daw yung internet connection ko. How do I do that? I don't know how to do it. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Can you hear me, Jesse? Yes, no, yeah. Kanina spotty, pero okay na lang. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yun nga, that, it's really true that the state bureaucracy has a big role in terms of saying who is IP or not. Because, for example, nga, the Ivatans are IP according to the state. Therefore, they are also... This is because my field work was in Batanes. Eh. When I went there, wala pang NCIP. So uh, it was like doing field work anywhere else, maybe in Pangasinan or anywhere in the Philippines. Pero nung after a while, nagkaroon ng Integrated Lands NIPAS Act. Tapos naging Batanes Protected Landscapes and Seascapes sila. So they, they were doing activities there. Tapos nung nagkaroon ng IPRA, kasi I did my field work in 92. And then um, when I went back after Iprana, biglang yung, yung kapit bahay namin na I just he was just our next door neighbor. Suddenly he was approaching me because uh, he's the tribal chieftain pala, and 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 they're looking for folklore because they're trying to get title to the <clears throat> the communal pasture land. And they're trying to get it um, uh, in opposition to the neighboring municipality where there's also another tribal council which is trying to claim that same place. So, so nagulat ako kasi I never saw him as a chieftain, a tribal chieftain. And what made him that what made him so was because there's IPRA and you can't do anything unless you're a you have those structures in place. <clears throat> okay, so I'll keep going. So this is um, the, a map of, of the peoples of the Philippines by Ferdinand Blumentritt, the great friend of our Illustrados. And you can see there are three colors. Uh, red or pink or orangey is the Territorios de los Cristianos Hispano-Filipinos. So these are all the Hispanized Filipinos who are Christians. The yellow, Territorio de los Cristianos Nuevos, or newly Christianized, y de los infieles, so the infidels or non-believers. So yung, yung para yung bagong Christianized, hindi pa talaga sila Hispanized enough to be considered Christians. So these are all the yellow parts, and you can see it's, it's rather big in... Here, this is the Cordillera area and then the Sierra Madre. This is the Caraballo Mountains. These are the interior of Mindoro and the interiors of Panay Island, Negros, Cebu. And then these are also mountainous actually. And this is uh, the largest part, the large part of Mindanao, which the Spanish never um, really controlled except for a small piece here, which is Davao. <clears throat> it's all yellow. And tapos yung green is Territorio de los Moros. So these are the Islamized peoples. <clears throat> Ito yung Maguindanao, Maranao, it's, it's the swamplands. <clears throat> and also here, there. And uh, this is a page, I, I forgot now where this came from, kasi na, nakuha ko lang siya. No, no, no. But here you can see that all the peoples of the Philippines are equal. So sa ito yung mga, kung saan sila nakikita yung mga Aita. And one thing we realize is there's so many kinds. Ang dami-daming klase ng, ng et, uh, people. So, so this mapa ethnographico has a list here. Negritos, different kinds, Igorotes, uh, Bukidnones. Kalamianes, kat I cannot read it, it's too small. So ito yung listahan niya, 63. 
<clears throat> tapos ito, this book ha- had, I think it's a geography book. Um, so kasama yung today you don't consider, for example, Cebuanos as IPs. But uh, they were they were just the people here in the in the whole island of Cebu and some parts of Negros. Dito rin yung sounds also interestingly some of these terms are not at all familiar today. You wonder what happened to them. Sin sana kaya yung mga dadaya. Itong agutaino. Uh, ibilaw. Never heard of them. And then here you have the Ilocano. So okay. So, maraming groups actually ng klase ng tao sa Pilipinas and this list has uh, changed. So, some people have disappeared but also there are new kinds of people, new ethnicities. So, seeing like a state, another map, this is naman what the Americans published in 1900 but it's based on the map of the Jesuits sa Manila Observatory. And so it similarly has the same coloration, pink, yellow, green, tapos uh, yung listahan ng iba-ibang klase ng tao in each of those places. And so the naturales or the natives, from the point of view of the Spanish, a quiz, sino to? <laughs> Who's this person here? <clears throat> Dapat may premio, if you can guess right. Uh, from the point of view of this guy, or of the Spanish in general, there were two kinds of peoples. Uh, may racial distinction kasi. Yung negritos, and this term is not specific to the Philippines kasi it's for Southeast Asia. Hanggang sa, sa Man- peninsula of Malaysia, there are dark people there and small ones who they also consider to be negritos. So two kinds of peoples were here, the Negritos and the Indios, or the parang mga Malay, brown people. And then those Indios are further in this map. You can see some are Moros, some are Infieles or Nuevos Cristianos, and some are Cristianos or Hispano-Filipinos, na, na Hispanay sila. And so basically what, what they achieved was to Europeanize or Hispanicize or we can say now to westernize certain parts of the Philippines, especially the lowland areas, kasi matataas na bundok yung nasa gitna of the Philippines. And then when the Americans came along, they saw what they, they called them tribes. So ang terminology nila, using the same map, they would have said non-Christian tribes or wild tribes and then Mohammedanized groups <clears throat> and the Christian tribes, tribes din sila. <laughs> and uh, some of the, I, I could write a lot more acronyms here, pero yung isang instrument of governance nila was called the Bureau of Non-Christian Tribes. And this guy headed it. So sino siya? Uh, can you give a name? <laughs> Jesse, may sumasagot ba sa chat? Uh, sa tanong ma'am wala, pero the chat, chat is lively. <laughs> ah, really? Okay, I cannot see the chat at all. <laughs> okay, so um, yung style ng American government, they separately governed the Christianized groups from the non-Christianized groups. So they had the Bureau of Non-Christian Tribes, parang uh, under the Department of Interior, parang yung DILG nila, may separate bureau for the non-Christian tribes. And then they had a totally separate administration for the so-called Mountain Province and the Moro Province. These were under the military. Yung, yung governors nila were military generals. And, and uh, the Mountain Province was actually not just the current Mountain Province, but it included all the provinces that, that we recognize in the Cordillera today from kasama yung Ifugao, kasama yung Kalinga, kasama yung uh, Benguet. Kasi ngayon, mas maliit na na probinsya yung mountain province. And the Moro province was the whole of Mindanao. <clears throat> so the use of the word tribes, Steve Jess Peralta has, has um, critiqued this term kasi he said for them, uh, it was 
the term to use because they could not accept them as nations. Yun nga yung political implication ng, if you call them peoples, then they are like nations. And in the America, they're called the first nations. And what the style kasi sa America was when the Europeans arrived, they entered into treaties with the natives. So may mga dokumento sila that are treaties allowing the European arrivals, for example, to use the land for this much time, ja, ja, ja. So equivalency yung, yung relationship between the the new arrived Europeans and the natives was on, as equals on an equal term. They could enter into treaties like separate nations. Um, and so they didn't want to go that way. So tribes ang ginamit nila. <clears throat> and this is also the term applied to all the peoples of Africa, <laughs> tribes. <clears throat> so it's actually, he says, it's an administrative device. Uh, a tribe has fixed territorial but actually, it's, it's uh, like, for example, the, the Tagalog tribe. Wala naman talagang teritoryo, wala namang chief, tribal leader. It's just an ethnicity, but it's not quite a tribe. So, but from the perspective of the state, um, uh, da, eh, dapat may leader, dapat may tribal council, ganun. Kasi yun yung structure ng isang tribe. Um, and, and the other implication is the primitiveness. So Peralta says we should never use the word tribe. We should just say ethnic group or ethnolinguistic group because that's good enough. <clears throat> Here on the right is another map. It's sort of similar, pero ang kinaibahan niya may malinaw na pagkahiwalay ng negritos as a separate set so all the black parts are the negritos <clears throat> and the, is this your your area this black part here is this is camarines norte i i'm not actually very familiar with the <laughs> the, the geography uh itong mapa ay galing sa kay barrows david barrows he was the head of the uh bureau of education and he uh he was an anthropologist Okay, so under that bureau, they also had in what they call the ethnological survey, which was just like how um, they tried to get to know the American Indians in America. Okay, so ganito actually yung pananaw talaga ng uh, mga Americano. They would transform here the metamorphosis of a Bontok Igorot, someone with no clothes to someone who looks like this. Uh, I don't know what, you can just make your own observations. It's a very visual transformation that they're trying to show. Long hair, short hair. But the other comments on this have been, uh, masaya siya dito, malungkot na siya dyan. <laughs> um, so, so if the Spanish converted people to Christianity, the big um, transformation that was made use of the, the agent of change is the school system. So ito yung halimbawa ng colonial project, civilizing project. And this one is a dialogue naman between the Americans and the uh, Ifugaos. I think this is in Ifugao. <clears throat> so, okay, so I'm going to move now to, I think I should go faster. <laughs> uh, after, independence after the war. So it's the Filipinos run like heaven or hell by Filipinos, <laughs> according to, to Quezon. Uh, tayo na yung nag-manage, nag, uh, mamahala. <clears throat> we have to imagine our nation as made up of many kinds of people. And uh, there are problems among some in some parts which can be solved by moving people around and the, the the moving of people around was also how the spanish um governed they they reduced people from mountains to lowlands and uh the americans also did some of that and and when it was the commonwealth era under um Quezon, they established this nlsa which is like a corporation 
on for land settlement so they, that they could move people from problematic areas where there was uh, un unrest because of lack of land like in the Visayas to places where parang frontier land siya sa Mindanao and so this is this is how a lot of people get homesteads and migrated from Luzon and Visayas to Mindanao through this National Land Settlement uh, Administration. And uh, what else did I want to say? <clears throat> so, malaki yung impact nito, <laughs> such that uh, today, in fact, you have oops, you have more settlers than indigenous people in Mindanao. Uh, in 1951, this guy, Marcelo Tanco, was an uh, anthropologist of UP. He wrote a book on the Christian peoples of the Philippines, and he div this div uh, divided them also into the major and the minor ones. Kasi mas maraming population yung mga major, so yung mga Tagalog, yung mga Bicol, yung mga Ilocano. Yung mga minor ones like the Ivatans, the Gaddang, and the Samal in Mindanao. And uh, when he wrote this book, he said, the only Christian people of Mindanao, there's only one, and it's a minor one, yung Samal. All the rest are not Christian. That was in 1951. <clears throat> okay, so, and then under Magsaysay, kay Magsaysay pala na-establish yung Commission for National Integration. And the idea is that everybody is uh, Filipinos, who should become um, able to receive uh, or to access the same kinds of services from government and education, etc. So now we're just talking of Filipinos, not like before where it was um, tribes or Negritos and Indios. So itong label na to, Filipinos used to mean Spanish born in the Philippines, but now, uh, it means everybody who is a citizen of the of this of this nation, and some of them are non-Christian or tribal, and some are Muslim. <clears throat> uh, in Marcos' time, he uh, dissolved the CNI and he put up the Panamin instead for national minorities, and so we have this uh, nomenclature way of categorizing instead of non-Christians, it's minorities. And uh, I can't see the bottom of my slide. Anyway, uh, after that, Corey comes along and uh, she reorganizes the, na, na, by the way, who's, who are these people here? Quiz na naman yan. We'll check the quiz later on after the show. <laughs> the show. So who is this and who is this? Um, uh, malaking iskandalo yung nangyari. Maraming kwento dito tungkol sa Panamint. But uh, in, in Curry's time, so this was reorganized to different more new state bureaucratic um, offices called the Office of Southern Cultural Communities and the Office of Northern Cultural Communities. So this the phrase now is cultural communities, which is not offensive uh, and very politically correct and nice to hear. At the same time, there's a new constitution and it is recognized in there, maybe thanks also to the indigenous people's rights movement and uh, the representation of the IPs, which was actually done by an anthropologist, Nasi Ponciano Benagin. Uh, so may provisions doon tungkol sa pagkakaroon ng posibilidad ng autonomy for the Cordillera and the and the uh, Muslim Mindanao. And this is because of, of um, the armed struggle that had taken place there specific to, um, to their situation. So Corey had a peace negotiation with Conrado Balweg here. I should have, that's part of the quiz. Sino ba to? Sino ba tong mga to? But there's a, it, it's interesting this exchange of gifts Ang binigay ni Cory ay Biblia, Rosario, at Armalite. At ang offering ni Conrado Balweg was a shield, a spear, a head, axe, and a bolo. And uh, 
after that, there was a um, referendum for, to see if there would be autonomy for the Cordillera. And in the end, hindi na lang kasi they did not vote for it. So it's just the Cordillera administrative region rather than the autonomous region. Only Ifugao was for autonomy. And today we have now this new phrase, indigenous peoples, which also has been a global parang um, uh, it, it is the it is the catchword for the global movement. And we have a national commission for indigenous peoples. So this is the map of the National Museum, which was put out in 1974. And if and just to show you that it's actually still looks the same, more or less, even the colors almost the yellow pa din yung mga, yung mga indigenous religion groups. So here you can see in the in the legend that the categorization is in terms of Christian groups, Muslim groups, and so-called indigenous religion groups. And then they also have a special legend for the extent of range of Aita Negrito groups and the areas frequented. So this has, uh, this is telling you that they are uh, moving around. <clears throat> they also have a legend for mixed population area and then Spanish influences. Nicole. Okay, so, and this slide is all about terminology. So marami, it's all about the labels. If, you're a, if you have an ethnic identification, you have a, a name for yourself. And uh, so uh, you can throw in your own, whatever you know, but these are some of the terms you, that have uh, sort of recurrence. Terms that mean pe just people like Manobo or terms that mean nation, bayan, or banwa, the word banwa, you find them in several groups. There are names that mean indigenous or naunang tao doon, like the word tumandok, it means they came first. And then you can also see a dis distinction between up and down, like Ilocano, Igorot, uh, remontado, sabundok siya. Um, it, it's also noticeable that the uh, in the north, Christianization happened more in the lowlands, and in the south, the conversion to Islam is also in the lowlands. So, itong maginda naute duray, they actually speak the same language, and they have a story of having descended from two brothers, but the one brother converted to Islam, sila yung maginda now, and one brother did not, and sila yung duray. Okay, I think I should rush on, kasi kawawa naman yung next. <laughs> Anyway, so you have people's names connecting to place and where they belong. There's mountain, sea, interior, river. Yung dumagat sabi ni Lawrence Reed, sa river balayon. And then sa bukid, yung iba. <clears throat> we also have sort of regional ethnic labels. So sakop nila yung several ethnicities like the word Bisaya or Igorot. But Ifugao hate to be called Igorot, but it means simply Taga Gulod or Gorot, Golot, Taga uh, Mountain Range. Um, I can't read the bottom part, but I think the, other, the bottom one says Bagobo, and Bagobo is very interesting because it, it encompasses three different groups, but they don't speak all the same languages. So in this, which shows you that ethnicity is not necessarily about language, although you might think ethnolinguistic groups lahat, pero hindi. Sa kaso ng Bagobo, what connects them is actually material culture. So what is Bicol? Maraming klase yata ng Bicol na hindi rin nagkakaintindihan. Does that make them separate peoples? Or why do they all call themselves Bicolano? That's one question that might be interesting also to find out. What, what is the commonality? Is it the place? What is it? <clears throat> Okay, so telling who is which has to do with um, maintaining boundaries between the groups, sabi ni Barth. So uh, you, 
you can actually move between ethnicities because you can convert, you can learn a new language, you can get married into some place or you can grow up there and you can claim another identity. But the, the separateness of the identity is still, is still maintained. So identity is, is um, marked by different kinds of markers. It can be language, food, whatever, but it's still considered separate. That's the interesting thing. People move between ethnicities all the time, but the identities don't change. Uh, I also wanted to note here that official records and ethnographic literature have some power to label. So ito yung mga dating label, halimbawa, Ilongo Tiruray, naging Bugkalot Tiruray. Ito sana yung ikakwento ko, this is my own fieldwork. This is all the same group. <clears throat> um, and then you have hybrids or mixed up groups <clears throat> or confused groups. <laughs> That's the literal meaning of kalibugan. So yung mga kalibugan sa Mindanao, sila ay subanon na nag-asawa ng moro, yung babae na subanon at lalaking moro. Or in other, another place, it's Maranao and Higaon on intermarriage. Ang tawag sa kanila, kalibugan. Sabi ni Benagen, this, when this is adopted, it suggests uh, that they, they're trying to also struggle for some kind of autonomy. So you're, you're seeing uh, the genesis of a new ethnicity out of mixture. And uh, if, if it's considered something that's not neither Subanon nor Moro, parang fusion or confusion, but to adopt the term as your identity is a political act. Um, maraming na, may na in my own sort of sometimes wanderings around the Philippines and na encounter ko ito Panimusan which is Palawan na nag-convert sa Islam tapos may, na, may isang si Teresa de Guzman she says yung napilaok ay unat at kulot na nag-asawa so their offspring napilaok sila which is not quite kulot not quite unat <laughs> okay and um, so these are hybrids, and um, what we see, we can also look at the the people who we don't normally call indigenous people today, like Tagalog, Cebuanos, etc. Zialcita has paid more attention to the lowlands, and he says that culturally we are all mestizos. And I even he says, let's say even the West even so-called West, the way they practice Christianity in Germany or in other parts is not all the same. So everybody is a mestizo. Even the Palawan, for example, uh, they are the people of the highlands of Palawan. Marami silang terms na nanggaling sa Sanskrit. Meron, meron din silang hiniram sa, sa Muslim, sa Islam. So what people are actually doing is some kind of synthesis, putting things together. Another term that you might encounter is syncretism. Uh, this, there's this term, bricolage, putting things together. It comes from different places, but it's put together only in your way. Uh, people have also talked about parang may schizophrenia. The way we practice Christianity is split level. So anyway, I, I'll, I won't delve into that no more. Okay, so turning to bi biological traits, sino ba yung indigenous? Uh, this is our newest narrative. It just came out this year. And so they are looking at genomic data and saying na, eto daw, five waves of human migration have come to the Philippines. And the most parang least mixed is the people in the Cordillera. So may mga mapa sila dun sa article na yon, they're saying people came in here this direction, the Negritos, and then the so-called Austroasiatic Manobo-like groups, dito daw. Uh, this, this wave, it's another kind of wave theory of migration, which the original person we associate this with is Bayer, although he also was systematizing a waves of migration theory of the Europeans like Blumentrip. Yung theory ni Bayer, may mga waves of migration, tapos may inland push. So yung mga bagong dating, tinutulak nila yung nandiyan na, 
papasok. <clears throat> and so according to the genetic research of that guy, that group of people, this is how it was 50,000 years ago. And then these people came, I can't see the date. Uh, and then another set, Sama-like people. And then the last one is the ancestral Cordillera, which are maritime. <clears throat> Ito actually yung inaaway nila na teoria based on linguistics naman, which, which only begins from Taiwan, not from the mainland. Okay. Turning to language, <laughs> uh, so here are maps about it, about diversity, linguistic diversity, and uh, theories. It's all uh, subfamilies of Austronesian. I mean, all part of one subfamily of Austronesian, which is so-called Malayo-Polynesian, and these are how they classify the languages of the Philippines, which because you're more closely related would also mean that uh, maybe genetically you are, but it doesn't, but language can move in a different way from genes. I have this picture here of another map of uh, Davao ito. And just to show you how complicated uh, it is or how there are things to explain, this map shows this map shows the different languages around the Gulf of Davao. Itong mga wika na to are related, Mansaka, Mandaya, and Kaulo. This one, uh, Taga Kaulo. The here this one. The other languages are a different um, set. Itong mga Manobo, Sarangani man, Sarangana Manobo is different, Bagobo is different. This is also Manobo and Blaan is also different. So the puzzle here is uh, you can understand why the people here are connected, but why is the Kaulo inland dito? Merong dito sa tip, tapos merong inland dito. And uh, <clears throat> so the explanation for this is that uh, the Maginda now were dominant in the area. And if you allied with them, with, or, sorry, if you did not ally with them at not, parang natag, hindi sila nag-ally sa Maguindanao, and the Sarangani Manobo did ally with the Maguindanao, so they, the natalo yung Tagakaulo, they could no longer be allowed to stay at the coast. So they were pushed in by the Sarangani Manobo. And it had something, it has something to do with the power of the Maguindanao Sultanate in this area. So, so you have these riddles, for example, why, to look for, to explain why are, the, why are these languages distributed in this way? Okay. You can also look at music. How is different, for example, the gongs, gong traditions. So here you can also see how connected actually Maybe our unit of study, parang the Philippines, the Philippines, pero actually the context should really be Southeast Asia because the Hulintang traditions are, are all spread out here. Then in terms of dance, you can also look at dance styles. So hindi lang yung in looking at um, connections through genes or languages, but also music, dance. <clears throat> this is um, the work of Josema said. Okay, so I'm almost done. This is the definition of indigenous peoples in the IPRA law, which is actually very long and very complicated. So it says here that it's a group of people with common bonds of language, customs, traditions, and other traits who have claims since time immemorial they own the place kasi they've occupied, possessed, etc. So this is problematic because hindi mo na maalala yung time. It's immemorial. But uh, some IPs have not been in a place for very long because they were displaced. Like uh, some Blaan, 80 years pa lang silang nakatira dun sa bundok na yun kasi lumipat sila from somewhere else. But still, they are claiming Kati anyway. <laughs> okay, so there, because there are other 
alternative ways to define an IP. Like, um, ito pala, this is a problem because not all are homogeneous kasi may intermarriages, etc. So, identify, these are, so the IP, the term IP also refers to homogeneous societies identified by self-ascription and ascription by others who have lived in a territory, they share all of this and have resisted colonization. And so naging iba sila tuloy. <clears throat> it also includes people who are regarded as indigenous because they descended from the original peoples and retained some institutions, but who may have been displaced or resettled. So, so maraming pwedeng isakot nito. <clears throat> After two decades, I'm, I'm going very fast na, malapit na. <laughs> Uh, we're, we, we, we should assess what is happening with IPRA and the IPs. Here are some critical statements. IPRA is anthropologically naive. It assumes that IPs are always self-sufficient. <clears throat> Hindi sila nagkakautang na lahat ng property nila is communal, but actually they do have private property or they, they're based on use rights, use of rock, that they won't um, sell land if they can just because they want to buy things like karaoke that they're not like the rest of us. <clears throat> this assumption is problematic because spaces can be shared with neighboring people or also contested with neighboring people or it's basically if you don't use it it's not yours. And so what is what is IPRA is some kind of state simplification of something that's very very complex. So it's against the complexity of the landscape itself, the ecological landscape, and the humans adapting to that ecological complexity by constantly parang redoing their tenure rights, actually. Pero ang ginawa ng state, isa lang, communal lang. <clears throat> and you have to organize yourself as a tribal council, tribal chieftain, etc. The other complication is their mixed population, settlers, already outnumbering the IPs and then they're intermixing. <clears throat> so this is the paradox of IPRA. It can be used for asserting rights to self-determination, but also for state control. In fact, there's a perception that it is what facilitates the entry of mining companies. Before, hindi nila alam sinong kakausapin nila. Ngayon, alam na nila. <clears throat> may tribal council, may tribal chieftain, etc. So it's, so it's, it's been, um, good for state control? Uh, has it been as good for indigenous people's rights? Uh, I think uh, this is as of 2012, but I haven't, I've seen their bills na dapat kasama to, pero hindi ko alam kung pumasa na yung bill. Pero it's supposed to be absent from our official list of land use categories. Walang term na ancestral domain as a land use. <clears throat> okay. The other critique is dun sa NCIP mismo, are they good enough to do the work? Are they competent? The people, so even the state is not one homogeneous thing because if you could look into the agency, for example, NCIP. By the way, may iba pang agencies na ayan siya ng gobyerno na relevant like the ENR, uh, NCCA, tourism, ganyan, that have dealings with indigenous peoples. And they all also sort of overlap and sometimes they fight with each other. But dun sa NCIP, uh, recently my um, questions over the, I think it's a colonel who is heading the NCIP and then, so what are the motivations of people? Are they really uh, there because of IP, indigenous people's rights? <clears throat> One of the big issues is about the free prior and informed consent, which has turned NCIP into a gatekeeper. It's not the community that decides, it's actually the NCIP has to be there. So, and then can you even do ethnography or research in your own group if, if you're an IP yourself without getting this NCIP mediated process? Um, dun sa isang forum ng ugat may nag, nag, nagpansin na ang mga tribal leader nagiging tribal dealer. And I think this is connected to the, the structures that IPRA has set in place. Okay. 
here's my my case <laughs> sa Samal Island. Ito yung mga na meet ko noong 1996. Uh, actually, nakita ko sila dahil nagsasayaw sila sa gym dahil may tribal fiesta night. Ay, may fiesta night, tapos tribal yung category nila. So they were, so I, in the end, I I got to know everybody here and they're all related to each other. Ito si Dato Dawang. Tapos, uh, ito magpipinsan sila, ito asawa ng pinsan nila. And, but she's Tausug. And they are all half Bisaya, it turned out. So they they are actually mestizo in terms of their mother came from Cebu and their father is Samal. <clears throat> Uh, yung isa pang term na tinatawag sa kanila, which is derogatory, is kanlaw. But if you look back, I was able to dig up some historical materials. Kanlaw just means pare, away pare, kanlaw. Um, and uh, it was a, an, an expression they frequently used to uh, say. Interesting things. Bongkog is what they do when their children get pregnant and they're too young to get married, so they do parang tribal marriage, bongkog, which is pinapakong yung ulo, kaya bongkog. Uh, you make your heads. So it's it's like a creative um, assertion, making use of so-called customary practices so that you can um, have your children get married in spite of the family code. In, in as, pinapakasal sila ng uh, officials. The other distinct things which about them where they have, they, they trace themselves back to the burials in the caves on Samal Island, in which are remnants of giant ancestors, mga dinagat. Um, that's, their, that's their story of origin, na ang unang tao sa Samal ay mga higante. Tapos, uh, naging, namatay silang lahat kasi nilason sila ng neighbor. So may kwento pa yun. And then, the, uh, the one of the practices that's still extant is when someone dies who is really Samal, because he lived his life as a Samal, they have to do this. Uh, what, parang pagbabang luksa after one year, they prepare a lot of, it's a food, amik, and they distribute it to all the people who came. The other thing about them is Actually, they are the people who defeated Dato Bago. They helped the conquistador, Uyangurin, to, to conquer Davao. Kung sa kwento nila, pulapo sila yung, sila yung humabon. Pero nanalo sila. Hindi, sila hindi, si, hindi yung side ng Kastila. Yung side ng Kastila won because of them. So that's their part. <clears throat> Ito yung... Um, uh, they're, they they live their lives like everybody else. I couldn't tell that they were indigenous, the way they dress, etc. Pero nung may namatay, naghanap talaga sila ng tao na gagawa ng offering na ganito kasi may lineage pala siya ng balian. balian, yeah, balian. <clears throat> and then when Dato Dawang died, <clears throat> they prepared all of this amik. And I also went and, you know, and, uh, it was redistributed. And this involves a lot, a lot of labor and hub operation. <clears throat> so the last, so, so here are maybe my things that I would like to, parang, don't forget these things. Look into history as well as ethnography. What are narratives of identity? Everybody has histories. If ethnicity is important, how is it visible and are, are there instances of othering or ito yung parang treating them as different and often as uh, in, a, in a pejorative way? <clears throat> when is IP being IP asserted? What is at stake? And don't be naive. Um, examine differences in perspectives. How, how is your perspective different, for example, from theirs? And if you see any tensions, that's a good way to begin to explore difference, including your own from them. Um, don't forget, uh, IPs are also part of other people's stories. Ethnicity is actually always about two groups, not only one. You, there's a relevant other or more, more groups. There's a multicultural context. 
uh, don't think of people as homogeneous because they are not and unchanging because they do transform. And also the state is not the same always. Um, I think I mentioned this now. So, and then negotiate for consent. Kahit na you don't get the FBIC, actually that's already research because you begin to see the, the who are the gatekeepers, who are the community, kahit hindi na tuloy. <clears throat> Okay, I've, I, I'll end with this um, points raised in an article on in Agham Tao, which is published by Ugat, and uh, wherein there was a dialogue between anthropologists and indigenous people's leaders. And ito yung parang emphasis ng anthropologist na si Riza Hobson, parang if you were to reduce it to a short thing, uh, ito dapat yung approach daw, maging mapagkumbaba, makinig, makilahok. Uh, she emphasized consent should be solicited and you have to do your research on a topic relevant to the community. If they find it irrelevant, it's not worth researching. <clears throat> be accountable to other scholars kasi if you don't behave yourself in the field, the others will be thought to be the same as you or... or um, uh, it will it will redound badly to everybody. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> share. I can't read it. Sorry, na natatakpan siya ng, <laughs> ng participants' pictures. Anyway, it's self-explanatory probably. So I wanted to end by asking, <clears throat> kasi we wanted to also make our session be a prelude to module six. Ba? I don't remember the number. Pero yung tungkol sa ethics in ethnography, um, kung may mga tanong kayo, ipapasa namin kay Rosario para sa kanyang session. Okay, so tapos na. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, ma'am. Maria Mangahas. We'll proceed to the next resource speaker on the same topic, Indigenous People of the Philippines. They call Sir Jesse Quarkes. Can you unshare my screen? Kasi I don't know how nawawala yung con. Ah, ito, ito. Stop share. Okay. Thank you. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Okay pa ba kayo? <laughs> Nag-stretching ako before actually I, I start. But before anything else, um, I'd like to thank, of course, yung uh, Camar Camarines North State College, which will soon to be a university, I heard especially a uh, shout out to Dr. Jotondo for this opportunity to share with you. So I very much look forward to hearing your thoughts, ninyo, especially after Dr. Mangas uh, presentation. No? Ang isa sa mga key takeaways ko doon is masalimuot talaga ang usapin ng mga katutubo. No? So baka uh, ma-discourage kayo mag-research about indigenous peoples. But all the more, no, we will see this as a challenge to probably rectify uh, past errors and how we represent our indigenous peoples. So sana, um, ayun, I look forward to your thoughts and uh, questions after my presentation. And if uh, complicated ang usapin ng katutubo, uh, I will complicate it further by bringing you to different uh, aspects about uh, this theme about uh, decolonization. And mahilig kasi yung mga anthropologists mag-complicate ng mga bagay-bagay as you have probably heard from the speakers uh, since yesterday. And if case, in case you are curious, yung map, I also ended up looking at maps while preparing for this topic. This map is from uh, the 1734 na map. And I'm not sure if naka-indicate na dyan yung daet. I think it's in that place in the Dalisay. But it was in the 18th century na period. Na. And uh, as Dr. Mangas has presented, very important yung maps sa mga... If, imagination natin, whether colonial, whether right now, contemporary, um, na paglocate sa mga katitubo. And then in my presentation, I'm going also to show a lot of photos of actual people, although they're already uh, presumably dead by now because they're from archives. But I re recognize the issues uh, along with it. Na, uh, may mga scholars na ayaw nilang magpakita ng mga actual photos ng people even if they're archival na because, uh, you know, Parang, parang tayo din, di ba? If we die someday, tapos papakita tayo ng mga future researchers. 
baka multihin natin sila. So sa presentation nito, um, I'm using these photos for academic discussion and I hope uh, walang masagasa ang mga uh, whatever legal and copyright issues. Now in talking about yung methods of collaboration, I have um, this flow. No? Uh, this is actually a very broad and complicated na topic and then nisip ko paano ba to pag-usapan. So I, I ended up I thought probably uh, just to titillate your uh, imagination. Definitely, you can go on deeper to some of these aspects. Uh, the first would be about the politics of representation by bringing in the case of the Igorot. And then I will talk about decolonization. Ano bang ibig sabihin yan in the first place? And then lastly, uh, about paano natin gawin yung collaborative na mga methods sa pag-research with, no? hindi on, hindi na yata appropriate ngayon no, na sila yung maging subject of research. Uh, they, uh, indigenous peoples uh, should be active in uh, the research design of participation uh, unless we want to replicate that kind of uh, research design in the past na uh, para silang mga, in a sense, guinea pig no, that under our academic scrutiny. So, um, the politics of representation yeah, highlight ko dito, sa so pupunta tayo na US, sa Missouri, only it was in 1904. And if you have heard about that uh, uh, 1904 St. Louis. Uh, can you see, by the way, that's the screen that I'm sharing? I hope you can see it. Okay, so good. So ang goal natin in, thank you for confirming, ang goal natin for uh, bringing up this case is to answer uh, a broad question. Paano ba nire represent pino portray yung mga indigenous Filipino sa colonial uh, imaginaries although we have already some sort of hint to this a presentation ni Dr. Mangahas na in, in, in maps in portrayals but this time kasi it is a very grand na portrayal in 1904 no? and I will tell you more about that later and in 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 talking about this politics of representation yung case ng Igorot ang tingin ko uh, interesting kasi nung 2017 parang may uh, uh, 2.0 version ito na nangyari. So yung photo na nandyan, they're actual, this is part of the actual photos nung affair noong 1904. No? Tapos ang title niya, and I'm reading in quotes, an entire Igorote family of the better class in reception attire. The array includes father and son, mother and daughter, although all appear about the Jesse, same. Jesse, can you move your PPT? The slide's not moving. I really? Okay, now you have, you, you're not, you're not using your slides. Ah, okay, so good. Thank you for that. I hope it's, so good. Can you see it now? Ah, yes, it's okay now. Kasi nung nagsasalita ka about the Igorots, yung ano lang, yung title page lang yung nakikita na. Ah, okay, okay, so good. So good. Ito yung earlier na slide about the, the flow and then ayan. So nakita nyo na yung picture. Family picture siya essentially. The actual photo featured in an album in the 1904. So again, ang, ang goal ko sana dito is ma-imagine natin paano pinoportray yung indigenous peoples in the past. And in doing so, hopefully, no, we will not replicate such kinds of representation in, when we do research among indigenous peoples. So yung caption nga niya, as I was reading earlier, uh, the, uh, in quotes, the array includes father and son, mother and daughter, and, and although all appear about the same age, behind them appears the thatched hut they call uh, home. Dozens of such families were included in the Philippine section. And uh, so doon na, may hint na tayo no, kung paano sa, sa caption, paano gustong i-frame yung photo na ito na uh, for, for anyone who's looking to this, ang gusto i-suggest is that hindi mo ma-distinguish sino si tatay, sino si nanay. And so, parang uh, uh, in, 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 in my uh, um, imagination, parang gusto nila i-suggest na at a very early age, na probably nag-marry yung mga idrot. So, ano ba yung uh, sinasabi kong fair na ito? Uh, the Louisiana Purchase Exposition was held in St. Louis, Missouri, sa U.S. noong uh, April to December 1904 no, to commemorate yung pagbili ng U.S. ng Louisiana Territory from France, no, which was uh, ano daw, 60 million francs no, or roughly about 3 cents an acre. 
And sabi ng mga scholars, arguably, it's the best land deal in American history. So after 100 years, or more or less, they want to celebrate such purchase. No? So yan yung isa sa mga, um, ano ba ang tawag dito, yung, yung souvenir na uh, showing the extent of the exposition. As you can see, it's very big, no? it's very grand. And it's popularly called St. Louis World Fair and extended over 1,200 uh, acres of land at that time. And then the exposition pavilions alone, 128, 128 acres. Uh. And then, uh, sabi dito, the world's first assemblage of world's peoples. No? And sometimes in some literature, ang tawag sa kanya is the largest human zoo. Because basically, ang, ang exposition dito, hindi yung mga objects, hindi yung mga um, uh, machines or other uh, technologies, but people, no? and they were replicating ano yung natural quote-unquote habitat nila. Here, I have a photo of uh, one of the actual uh, indigenous Filipinos that were featured, no? exhibited in such St. Louis Fair. So ang, ang caption niya, a young married couple of the Bagobos tribe in Philippine village and two world's fair. So sabi sa literature, pinakasikat daw ang Philippine reservation kasi hindi lang Filipinos yung finisher doon. Eh. May mga American Indians, may mga Africans, no? and, and all other uh, different peoples around the world as, as having a world fair nga siya. Pero of all the features uh, or exhibitions featured at that time, yung Philippine reservation yung pinakasikat daw. Sabi sa statistics nila, 90 out of 100 fairgoers went to the Philippine exhibit. So ganun siya ka, ka popular. And according to the publicist nung fair na ito, uh, ang fair daw dapat magbe-benefit yung mga Filipinos through Americanization. Their long sojourn in St. Louis would put them in such close contact with Americans. So ganun yung purpose sana nila na by bringing in the indigenous peoples kasi may mga Moro, may mga uh, katutubo as we imagine right now. No? In this case, mga Bagobo, meron ding mga Christian uh, families na yun yung sinasabing civilized. Ang, ang goal is, again, ma-Americanize -ma sila para ma-familiarize sa American costume. So in other words, maging civilized. No? And so unfortunately, I, 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 I cringe no? because I still hear uh, many people would say sana ma-civilize sila even among uh, academics uh, when talking about indigenous, contemporary indigenous populations. At the same time, sabi din daw sa publicist, the American public would become familiar with Philippines' various and incongruous tribal populations who differed in race, language, and religion. So parang two-way, matututo yung mga indigenous Filipinos na dinala nila sa Missouri at yung mga Americans naman matututo sa paano ba yung mga Filipinos. And when this was uh, exhibited in 1904, a lot of elite Filipino families allegedly were uncomfortable of this no? kasi Hindi naman ganyan ang mga Filipino eh, na hindi naman kami puro tribal. And yet, dito sa World Fair na ito, pinifeature yung mga exotic no, na, na element of our identity uh, at that time. And then, as hinted also, as explained by Ma'am Maria kanina, no, ang, ang idea dito is ipapakita yung stages of social progress, no, yung evolutionary na pag-iisip dati, social evolution na Meron mga savage, meron mga barbaric, and then eventually at the apex of this, yung mga civilized. And we know right now, of course, that this is a problematic uh, formulation because, well, sino ba yung mga barbaric tayo? No? And sino yung civilized? Sila yung mga uh, the West who uh, formulated such formula in the first place. So meron siyang polyglot assemblage ng mga igorot, mga negritos, mga visayans, at mga moro para i-represent yung tri-people again at Prinisenti Ma Maria kanina yung, yung may mga heathens, no? may mga pagans, may mga Christian who are supposedly the, the civilized Indios and then the Moro or the Muslims. And then the Philippine Reservation daw was designed to deliver the political message, yung evolutionary array of indigenous groups and the advancement of humanity toward uh, 20th century American civilization. In a way, gusto din ipakita ng mga Amerikano dito na for four, 300 years, uh, more than 300 years of Spanish colonization, bakit ganito pa rin yung mga Filipino? Parang, parang contest between the Spaniards and the American uh, colonizers. Now, we are better colonizers uh, than the Spaniards in a, in a way, sabi no, by, by having this exhibit ng mga Americano. Here's another picture showing a young Visayan citizens and canos on the shore of Arrowhead Lake 
as part of the St. Louis Expo Exposition. So yung Philippine exhibit, it's, it was very gigantic, no? an expensive undertaking. Uh, sabi pa sa reports, it, was, it costed around half a million dollars at that time, no? which is today around 50 million uh, US dollars. And it housed about 1,250 individuals and displayed over 75,000 objects, almost in exhibition categories. So just imagine 1,250 individuals. Ilan ba ang student population ng Camarines Norte State College? Uh, kung ganyan ba kadami? So imagine, no, ganun kadaming tao yung in-exhibit in just one place. No? And they're not uh, ordinary participants. No? They are being exhibited, meaning they have to perform their um, culture, so to speak, to, to on, on, on lookers, to the uh, visitors no fair. And then, um, bago ka daw pumasok sa Philippine Reservation no, St. Louis World Fair, meron daw propaganda muna. And I'm, putting this, I'm reading this in quotes. No? Sabi, those who visit the Philippine exhibit must stop to consider that 400 years ago, the inhabitants were most primitive people separated into many small tribes before they can really appreciate the meaning and value of the picture set before them. So pwedeng pumunta yung mga... So I hope you noticed the language that was used ng yung uh, primitive tribe which uh, Dr. Mangas has alerted us earlier na problematic na i-deploy yung mga terms na ito nowadays. And then yung mga bisita, if magta-teleport tayo sa panahon na yun, the visitors could choose from three theme areas sa Philippine Exhibition Pwede tayo pumunta sa indigenous peoples, pwede tayo pumunta sa Spanish influence, or sa American present. And so we know that kind of hierarchy, right? Kung saan yung, yung pinaka-exciting because this is the most exotic, the indigenous peoples. And then saan yung sa somehow maka-evoke na bakit ganito pa rin under Spanish influence and then uh, the source of pride ng mga Americans during their colonial um, um, project in the Philippines. Tapos, Guilty kasi yung mga anthropologists sa, sa nangyaring ito. No? In fact, mayroon isang libro entitled, if you're interested, I can give you a copy. Anthropology Goes to the Fair, no? the 19-over Louisiana Purchase Exposition. Essentially, what the book is saying is that anthropologists were accessory to this crime. No? We are very much responsible uh, sa pagkategorize at pag-classify uh, ng mga different people. Yung racial science in the 19th and 20th century were offered by many anthropologists, uh, top-notch anthropologists during, during that time. And exhibiting different peoples around the world, supposedly it bridges the uh, different categories you know, where the anthropologists could legitimize our field. Kaya, kaya, kaya pwede kaming makonsider, tayo na makonsider na science kasi kaya natin i-classify. Remember na uh, part of that discussion with Dr. Geb yesterday na in categorizing peoples, part yun nung yung positivist tendency na kaya mo nga yung i-categorize parang sa natural sciences din na you can put taxonomic classification so ganun din sa in-apply sa, sa, sa human studies and eventually it became like the racial science so the anthropologist helps support economic elites messages regarding race and social progress and scientifically validated and justified overseas imperialist expansion Sabi pa nga sa ilang literature, no, yung anthropology is the colonial science. Kasi nga, if it is a science and it is study, a study about peoples, then it could legitimize na, okay, civilized pala talaga yung ilang mga, uncivilized pala, no, savage pala yung ibang mga tao sa mundo. And we could justify now our imperialist agenda by colonizing them and bringing civilization to them. Uh, yung metaphor nga sabi ni Ma Maria ng mga Americans sa is little brown brothers no? so they literally have to fend us no? in terms of uh, putting up our uh, public institution kaya the reason why we have a presidential government system, no? we have a bicameral congress, it's all because no? thank you to the Americans thank you or na, <laughs> not you know, thanks to the Americans and so dito sa exhibit na ito na-emphasize na yung exotic no? yung sinasabing true savages and in particular, yung mga igorot at yung mga negrito. So sa, sa range ng mga Filipinos sa dinala doon, Bagobo, Visayan, Moro, yung pinaka-hierarchy pa noon, na, nasa pinakababa, yung mga igorot at yung mga negrito. So while an igorot may be essentially naked, another label asserted, he wears a pocket hat with a circular straw crown, which he facets at the back of his head. So yung mga igorot pa, dun sa dalawa, igorot at negrito, mas lamang pa yung igorot kasi 
uh, meron siyang culture, so to speak. No? Pero yung mga negrito who are described as a puzzling race with, and I put in quotes, extremely low intellect, incapable of learning. They were, however, interesting because they were an evolutionary missing link. So if you are uh, familiar sa narratives ng human evolution in the 19th, 20th century kasi, obsessed yung mga scientists na hanapin yung missing link no? to prove that they share a common ancestry with, with the apes and the monkeys. Yung missing link, ibig sabihin, hindi siya parang mististo na concept, yung hybrid na kinikwento ni Mama Maria kanina na hindi tao, pero hindi rin ongoy. Pero in between, no? kaya siya yung missing link. And they were able to find that missing link, unfortunately, to the Negrito population uh, as exhibited dito sa St. Louis World Fair. So ang caption, for example, ng photos sa middle, uh, Bontok Igorot men sitting on their drums, eating dog meat with visitors watching in background. And dito sa exhibit na to, may special fascination yung mga Americans sa dog meat eating. No? Yung, kasi nga, of course, uh, we know na sa, sa Western culture, dogs are a man's best friend. No? So therefore, it's unimaginable for them why would you eat meat? The only reason you would eat meat is that you are savage, no? you are uncivilized. And so, gusto nilang pinapakita. In fact, may kwento sa literature na uh, at the, during this time, nagsusupply yung Missouri government, no? yung sponsor na exhibit na to, ng around 200 dogs a month to the Igorot just for them to keep on eating dogs. No? Whereas, sinasabi naman ng no, mga Philippine anthropologists, hindi naman typical sa diet ng mga igorot ang pagkain ng aso. No? It's, it's like a ceremonial or a special meat. It's not a day-to-day -day like chicken or some fowls. No? And yet, uh, yun yung gusto nila exhibit. As you can see in the photo, may mga sa mid-ground may mga igorot na kumakain and then sa likod may mga fully clothed no? white men observing uh, them. No? And you can only imagine ano yung iniisip nila and ano yung nafo-form nila na, 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 na stereotypes. No? when they were looking at our uh, kababayan na mga ifugaw, forcibly uh, asked to uh, eat dog meat in this ex exhibit. Yung caption naman nung uh, photo na negrito sa, uh, sa right ng, ng slide is, uh, and I put in quote nga, the missing link. No? Meron siyang pangalan, si Repino, a 42-year-old negrito participant from Bataan in the Philippine Reservation. Now, we don't know anymore kung ano nang, nangyari kay Ripino. No? Some, some would say kasi na may mga pinauwi sa Pilipinas after the fair and then there were also who, who, uh, who stayed in the US. And in fact, may mga uh, ano sila, yung mga kamag-anak na, na buhay until now who could trace na mga American citizens, of course, their lineage dito sa mga exhibit ng mga Pinoy in 1904 na, na, World Fair. And then merong document, you can Google this online. You can get a copy na the complete portfolio of photographs and very fascinating ito. So ito na yung Igorot case na gusto kong i-highlight. So there were at least 115 Igorots during this time. 100, 110 Moros yung finiture in exhibit. 80 Visayans and 40 Negritos on June 12, the official census day. There were also midgets who, were perform, who performed acrobatic acts to appeal to the American taste for exotic curiosities. Ano yung mga actual itsura ng mga igorot na finisher dito? Ito yung mga, some of the photos that I find interesting. So, kung maliit yung caption, sa, sa, low, sa left na photo, I will read it to you. Ang, ang caption niya, A Filipino bell. This young woman represents the higher type of islanders who have recently come under the American flag. She is shown standing before the assembly hall in the Philippine section. Personal charm and intelligence are possessed by Filipinos of this type. So again, notice how we are described no, to a foreign uh, person, in this case, Americans, kung sino ba ang mga Filipino na mga katutubo. In the middle, ang caption naman niya sabi, Moro chief posing at the fair. Raised aloft by this Moro warrior is the favorite native weapon a sword with a narrow blade shaped like a tongue of the flame. A thrust from this odd weapon with its keen double edges inflicts a terrible wound that usually closes when the blade is withdrawn. So ano yung ina-emphasize naman dito no, na aspect na pagiging moro by showing uh, 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 an odd weapon, quote-unquote. 
Sa right photo, ang caption niya, an igorotic chief at the exposition. This is the striking head and bust of a young igorotic chief, the warlike representative of a Filipino tribe who have been pronounced of such violent temper that it is impossible to peacefully assimilate with them. They are noted dog eaters of the fair and are said to be head hunters. So again, yan yung representation ng mga katutubo in this uh, world fair sa, in 1904. As I have said, merong fascination yung American public, at least yung mga nag exhibit nung uh, 1904 World Fair, St. Louis World Fair, sa dog-eating aspect ng culture ng mga igorot. So dito, ang caption naman, bleeding the dog, in preparing the dog for the feast of our igorote children, first strangle him with a cord and then bleed him, bleed him. This was the time when most of the spectators got on their shocked expression daw, sabi ng literature, which hugely amused those who were about to partake. No? Those chiefly concerned in the bleeding always put on their fiercest looks at this stage of the proceedings. So meron ding performance yung mga uh, igorot during this time na kapag ibibleed na nila yung mga aso nga, no? uh, they would put on their fierce face para ma-fascinate or matakot yung mga American public during the exhibit. In a journal article entitled Re-examining Igorot Representation, Issues of Commodification and Cultural Appropriation, written by our colleagues sa Ugat, si Annalyn Salvador Amores, Sabi niya, the Igorote village was extremely popular with fairgoers and earned significant profit for the organizers. So at the fair, the Igorots performed gong playing, demonstrated weaving, smithing, and rituals to the delight of the patrons. Perhaps one of the most sensational highlights of the exhibit, which created an enduring image of the Igorots, was the staging of the Igorot dog feast. No? Yung sinasabi nat, yung pinapakita natin so far, wherein the slaughter, roasting, and consumption of a dog was played out of the city of St. Louis. So played out. No? And then the city of St. Louis uh, supplied some 20 dogs a month from the local pound. So the igorots could perform this stipulating spectacle several times a week. And even nga, again, yung dog meat ay hindi naman uh, staple sa igorot uh, diet. No? Uh, they, they only eat it on certain occasions. The result was the creation of another still powerful stereotype of the Igorot to be placed alongside those that classify them as headhunters, savages, and freaks, unquote. So yun yung sinabi ni, uh, sinulat ni Iking Salvador Amores. So dito naman, singeing the dog, no, yung uh, sinusunog siya briefly para matanggal yung kanyang balahibo. If you're a dog, eat, dog meat eater, then you should be familiar with this process. Interestingly, uh, so 1904, mag, uh, time travel tayo, 2017, merong nangyaring tinatawag na Manila Fame wherein na-showcase daw, ang the, and I put in quotes, uh, read in quotes, the best of home, lifestyle, and fashion products from handpicked exhibitors. So madala, familiar sa atin to na, na, na event, right? I have attended, and most likely many of us have attended this kind of exhibitions, no? And then, ang interesting dito sa exhibit kasi, they also featured uh, a very popular now na uh, tattoo artist, no, na indigenous person, si Wang Od uh, of uh, Kalinga. Sabi sa isang report sa news online, uh, Wang Od is known to be one of the last mambabato or Kalinga traditional tattoo artist. She, she is said to be 100 years old. Pero yung celebratory mood ng Manila fame, medyo nag-turn into uh, a different tone because some netizens, no, nung na-point out nila, began criticizing the organizers for supposedly exploiting the tattoo artist by allowing her to tattoo up to 300 attendees at the trade show. So, I'm not sure uh, if nakoconnect niyo doon sa World Fair yung um, nangyayari dito sa uh, 2017 Manila Fair with that St. Louis exhibition. Definitely, some of the netizens at that time pointed out na parang reminiscent nga ito, no? 2.0, St. Louis World Fair 2.0, wherein you bring an indigenous person to be featured kung ano yung kultura niya. Only this time, not about dog eating, but about tattooing. So some netizens criticized the event, saying it was not really intended to promote Kalinga's tattooing tradition, but only to earn money. No? The, the anger increased when a photo of the 
what seemed to be restless Wang Ud went viral. So merong apparently itong sa Facebook nakita ko lang na photo allegedly na isang forum no? tapos si Wang Ud nasa gitna natutulog na no so most likely napagod dahil sa dami ng tinatu nilagyan niya ng tattoo for that exhibition. So that, sabi naman ng another uh, media report, well, many were grateful to that chance to meet and get a tattoo from the world-renowned tattooist. Some expressed their concern on how the event was handled. Yun nga, kasi uh, nakikita nila na napapagod si Wang Od. Uh, sabi ng isang blogger who posted about the supposed exploitation of Wang Od, the organizers charged attendees 2,500 for a tattoo, 500 for a signature, yung, tat- yung signature niya, yung tatlong dots ng tattoo, and 700 to see Wang Ord at the press conference. So you have to pay to see an indigenous artist, a very old person, uh, just to see her craft, no? which is tattooing. So I'm not sure with you again if you can see that connection of um, the St. Louis World Fair and this particular Manila film. No? Uh, but definitely, as I have said, nakita ng mga netizens with their critical eyes no? yung uh, sense of exploitation dito. dito. Sabi pa ng Philippine Tattoo Artist Guild and I'm putting in quote, I'm reading in quotes, no? inabuso talaga siya, wala silang kaalam-alam na ipagtatato siya pagdating sa Manila. Pero sa statement ng organizers ng Manila Fame, they clarified naman daw na all proceeds of the tattoos of Wang Ud and her nieces were hanged handed to the Kalinga elders. So binigay naman daw lahat ng proceeds. No? Although uh, that's not the point, sabi naman ng ibang mga netizens. It's not about the money, but the very idea that you're exploiting her by exhibiting her. No? Para siyang, again, live exhibit of a person, indigenous person, with her uh, craft. Tapos, uh, the, the same article na nabanggit ko kanina, written by Iking uh, Amores, Salvador Amores, tinanong niya, when indigenous peoples perform their primitiveness in cities or in diaspora, particularly itong si Wang Ud, that, does it also undermine their authenticity? Uh, so in a sense, it, it also asks us no, na kapag ba nag-perform sa indigenous person because of the experience of other indigenous Filipinos in the past, in particular sa St. Louis World Fair, uh, nawawala ba yung pagiging indigenous person nila just because they, they, they sort of... Uh, commodified their uh, their culture. All right, so yan yung case ng representation. Uh, again, just to give you a, an idea of how um, indigenous Filipinos were portrayed in the specific case of the Igorot in the 1904 St. Louis World Fair. Ngayon naman, kaya natin tanungin kung ano ba yung decolonization in the first place no? because this has become the buzzword. And in fact, this is our theme no? sa UGAT conference natin this year na ang organizer natin is no other than Dr. Joe or conference convener, Dr. Joe uh, Tondon. And so in ma- malawak din ang literature about decolonization, but for the purposes of our discussion today, because I've given a limited time, I will discuss what I call the, the Western version of decolonization and the Philippine version. So when we say decolonization, essentially from the, the, the term, no, as the name implies, uh, tanggalin natin yung colonizing aspect of how we represent uh, indigeneity. As we have seen in the, in the first part of this presentation, my, uh, my uh, deliberate attempt no, to portray indigenous populations or indigenous Filipinos as backward, as uncivilized, as savage, as compared to uh, the white person, and in this case, dito, white European, Euro-American, cisgender, heterosexual male, because karamihan ng mga anthropologists in the 19th and early 20th century were mostly pute, no? lalaki, tapos, uh, uh, yan, yung feature na yan, no? uh, cisgender, heterosexual male. And as, as, as you can see, th- this picture on the left may seem to be just a typical picture, right? Pero pag I-examine mo ito using what we know so far, you would see uh, that there are underlying messages uh, around here. No? We see, again, the contrast between uh, a big person, white guy, fully clothed, no? therefore civilized, and two indigenous uh, persons, in this case, Negrito man and woman of Mount Mariveles, province of Bataan, na scantily clothed, no? and even the, the, 
the woman is bare-breasted to which for some people during that time and even until now would be a shock you know bakit walang damit pantaas so in a sense yun yung point ng decolonization so if the anthropologists were the the guilty party to to the racial sciences ang mga anthropologists din ang first nag-call na teka lang tigilan muna natin tong ganitong klaseng pag-iisip sa mga tao and we should uh, put this into context where political and different colonial imperialist projects were taking place. No? So merong, merong call for decolonize uh, within anthropology as hinted by uh, Dr. Eli Gibb sa talk niya kahapon. No? Na i-rehistoricize yung anthropology, uh, gaya nung na-present din ni Ma Maria, of thinking about how we represent indigenous Filipinos in the past and ano yung implication niya sa othering na pinatawag. Paano ba natin gusto imagine? So at this point, I hope you are already asking questions in your mind when we do research sa mga indigenous peoples in Camarines Norte. No? Ano, yung, ano yung way of looking uh, natin? No? Ano yung framing kaya natin sa, sa pag-research uh, with indigenous uh, peoples? And then one of the important uh, aspects of decolonization is to pay attention to structures of power and control no? that emerged during colonialism and continue into the present. As what we have seen doon sa case ng Manila fame, no? uh, of course, yung intent organizers ng Manila fame were probably very sincere no? and walang, hindi gusto mag-steer up ng uh, controversy. But again, if we don't study our history and uh, how we represent indigenous peoples, we, may, we will run into interesting sort of uh, conundrum and problems and issues. So yun yung brought, uh, briefly, anong ibig sabihin ng Western colonization na sinasabi natin. Pero uh, sa Philippines then before the, this uh, term became fashionable, decolonization, uh, marami nang ginagawa yung mga local quote-unquote scholars natin to indigenize the social sciences which started around 70s. Uh, but interestingly, itong mga scholars natin, na sina Ver, Enrique, sina Suiza Lasal, Prospero Covar, they were trained abroad, no? nag-aral sila sa labas. Tapos nung bumalik sila sa Pilipinas, yun nga, uh, nagkaroon ng indigenization movement. And probably some of our elders here na nasa ugat can share more later sa question and answer portion about how these uh, things unfold, no? this uh, movement to indigenize the social sciences. So sa larangan ng psikolohiya, nandiyan yung SP or Psikolohiyang Pilipino. Sa larangan naman ng disiplina ng kasaysayan, nandiyan yung pantayang pananaw. At sa anthropology, yung tinatawag na Pilipinolohiya ni uh, Paul Pinkovar. So nagkaroon ng linguistic turn na tinatawag that many of the concepts, social science concepts that we learned uh, in the Western model were now translated into local categories, categories para siya yung magiging uh, angkla natin para intindihin yung sarili nating kultura. So for example, yung anthropology ngayon na ay agham tao na, no? the science of humans. And so yan yung name din ng journal natin sa ugat if you're interested. You can look it up uh, sa webpage ng Ugat para makita niyo some of the publications. Yung isa sa mga elders natin sa anthropology sa Ugat, si founding president natin, si Lolo Pons Binagen, meron siyang sinulat about Asianization of anthropology. Sabi niya, this perspective to Asianize anthropology and the other sciences was the logical consequence of the recognition of the inadequacy of Western models, hypotheses, and theories. If you are a major of education, for instance, di ba, may mga uh, theories of learning, no? tapos all, all those foreign names na tapos ilalapat natin sa Philippine experience. No? So essentially, ganun yung nakita ng mga scholars natin na hindi sapat. No? May kakulangan ang mga banyagang konsept at kategorya para maintindihan kung sino tayo uh, as a peoples. No? Sabi ng isang Malaysian sociologist, may sunulat siya about... Uh, chapter ng isang book, Indigenization, Features and Problems, uh, na hindi lang kasi sa Pilipinas nagkaroon ng indigenization movement ng social sciences na maraming bansa sa Asia and Africa and Latin America. And if we look at the patterns kung paano nag-indigenize yung social sciences, ito daw yung mga, mga themes na nag-emerge, na the lack of creativity, for instance. No? Uh, yung inability ng mga local scholars, local I mean yung mga native now, no? to turn into scholars, uh, of anthropologists, for instance, outside the uh, Euro-American cultural area to generate original theories and methods. If you um, re review, for instance, yung mga social theories na 
na pag-aralan ninyo if you, you, and, you and you were doing social science courses. Uh, again, karamihan doon ay mga uh, foreigner. No? Karamihan doon ay mga lalaki. Karamihan doon ay mga ano. So, nawawala ng, ng boses. Ito yung sinatawag na the absence of subaltern voices. Yung, yung mga tao na pinoportray doon sa mga pag-aaral na yun. Yung memesis naman, yung uncritical adoption of imitation of Western anthropological models. No? Yung yung parang ano lang dispenser pedagogy lang tayo na kung ano yung sabi sa textbook yun na rin ituturo natin no? without a critical reflection of whether these uh, concepts are applicable in the first place in our own lo- local context essentially sem is uh, nabanggit na to many times in the presentation uh, ng mga uh, speakers natin yung idea na kaya mong i-delineate into features no essential features yung mga traits ng mga tao so halimbawa ito nga ko ang negrito ano bang anong in 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 some descriptions they would pay attention na kulot ang buhok niya pango ang ilong niya or uh, maitim yung balat niya uh, uh, again these descriptions are uh, tendencies toward essentialism na gusto mong i-highlight lang yung features but we know na maraming exceptions sa sa mga features na yan and then, uh, as pointed out by Ma'am Maria, no, yung alignment with the state na karamihan ng mga teoryang ito at yung mga anthropologists, in fact, no, yung nabanggit ng mga David Burroughs, yung head ng BNCP, they were all part of the colonial uh, administration of the Americans no, which uh, uh, helped us imagine the, the other, the Philippines. So halimbawa yung isa sa mga lolo natin sa anthropologists of the Philippines, si Henry Otley Bayer, part yun ng ganitong klaseng agenda of understanding our uh, peoples in terms of the, the point of view na estado, uh, yung, yun nga, yung mga may, may stages of development. Merong isang libro na, ang, na in fact nandun sa mga set of readings na na-share natin. Uh, if you're interested about uh, decolonizing in terms of methodologies, Mayroon isang landmark publication na kinakonsider ng marami from a Maori scholar. I'm not sure if na-meet ito ni Doc Jotun do sa, sa New Zealand na nag-aaral siya doon. Um, si uh, Linda Tuhiwai Smith, na isa siyang Maori, tapos may sinulat nga siyang libro na ganito. Ang, ang punto niya, sinulat niya ang libro by the way, not for uh, non-indigenous scholars, but indigenous scholars. No? Para paano ba natin i-decolonize niya yung research uh, meron kasi siyang sinabi sa introduction niya, no? from the ba- vantage point of the colonized, a position from which I write and choose to privilege, the term research is in- inextricably linked to European imperialism and colonialism. The word itself, research, is probably one of the dirtiest words in indigenous wor- world's vocabulary. Ang gusto niya i-point out na yung, yung uh, in- naiinis na, no? asar na yung mga, mga katutubo, sa mga tagalabas na nire-research sila tapos umaalis tapos walang nangyayari sa sitwasyon ng mga katutubo. Kasi if we look at the indigenous populations then and now, yung, yung situation naman nila, nila talaga are, are common. No? Yung point out nga na marginalized. No? They are socio-economically um, uh, underprivileged and many other issues na hindi nabibigyan ng toon kasi yung, yung gaze sa kanila mas mas gusto yung exotic no yung tignan na ano ba yung uh, belief nila ano ba yung, ano kaysa sa real situation na sana ay uh, ma-uplift sila in terms of social economic standing and rights based approach sa development although sinasabi doon ng libro na ang intention naman ng mga researchers gaya nung nag-organize ng St. Louis World Fair ay ay sincere right like when we do research on indigenous peoples we don't, we, we we mean no harm right Pero yun nga, kapag built-in pa rin yung ganong klaseng colonial list na tendency of doing research no? by, by putting them in a parang observational status lang na para sila mga organisms na gusto mong tignan lang at i-describe, uh, inherently, meron siyang oppressive elements as pointed out by many scholars. So I encourage everyone kasi nasa ano ito, folder ng Google Drive, I'm not sure if na-share sa inyo to look this up no uh, very easily readable ng itong book na ito and may, may marami interesting points na shared dito and yung keynote ko dito is about again if we do research methodology and indigenous peoples together at wala tayong uh, uh, attentive na pagtingin sa mga issue ng colonialism at ano 
we are perpetuating the errors of the past. As we have said, anthropology as a colonial science is most complicit sa classification and framing of the other. So for instance, ito din madaling i-Google, uh, publication na 1909 by Alfred Prober, The Peoples of the Philippines. And uh, basahin mo lang yung intro, you would get a sense of how they would describe us. No? And if it, in a, like ako, ma-offend ako na ganito pala ang pag-describe sa akin because uh, nandun yung framing again na, na mababa tayo and therefore they have to colonize us to be assimilated into a civilized na, na manner. So yung may nag-describe that anthropology is the science of imperialism par excellence because the anthropologists were very good in uh, portraying the indigenous peoples into categories in the classification that really fit into that racial sciences na framework. And then, um, meron akong nagustuhan ko dito sa isang reference. Sabi niya, we cannot do much to right the wrongs of colonial past. No? Hindi naman tayo pwede mag-time travel at sirain yung St. Louis welfare, so to speak. No? Yet, we can be vigilant about the lurking and unquestioned presence and then confront them with all the discomfort that entails. So even if uh, parang self-criticism minsan yung ginagawa natin, part yun no? ng decolonizing uh, process and how we understand ourselves as a people and how we portray ourselves no? uh, yung uh, different indigenous communities sa research outputs natin. So lastly, oh, malapit na palang mag-land, so baka nagugutom na kayo sa lahat na sinasabi natin. So ito na yung last part, uh, the methods of collaboration. Paano ba natin, considering all the issues that we mentioned so far, no? uh, briefly lang naman na-encounter natin dun sa politics of representation, no? Paano tayo mag-conduct ngayon ng research among the ITs? No? So in this last part of the presentation, yung, yung mga gusto kong pag-usapan, yung mga possible avenues for collaboration. So as, uh, among others, no, we do not, again, repeat the errors of the past. In the same book, yung Decolonizing Methodologies, ni Linda to Hiwai Smith, meron siyang The Indigenous Research Agenda. So again, I invite you to look it up. Isang chapter siya, uh, three succeeding chapters na explain niya kung ano yung posible yung maging indigenous research agenda. At nasa gitna, if you will notice, yung term na self-determination, which is again, uh, nabanggit na ni Ma Maria, we have nationally legislated through our IPRA, no, yung Indigenous Peoples Rights Act natin. So part naman kasi ang yung social movement ng, ng rights ng indigenous uh, Filipinos, ng global no, na, so, na social movement. So yung language ng self-determination is not exclusive to us. Ang tanong ni Linda to Hiwai Smith, no, and I, ito kaya nakakoach siya, sabi niya, what happens to research when the research become the researchers? No? Have we considered that na yung mga indigenous peoples, hindi na sila subject of research, but they are the researchers themselves, no, trying to understand who they are. Uh, may mga discussion sa libro about ethical research protocols, may discussion about how to do community research, my discussion about training indigenous researchers, my discussion about insider outsider research, etc. So I invite again everyone to look at this book if you are if you want to go into the details of uh, researching with indigenous peoples na, na direction. Ito din nabanggit na ni Mama Maria kanina no kung kung ano yung indigenous peoples uh, agenda. Eh, hindi na tayo kailangan tumingin pa sa libro ni Linda Twy Smith, kasi meron tayong in the Southeast Asian region, as far as I know, we are the only country, the Philippines, that has nationally legislated again the rights of, of the indigenous population. Sa ibang bansa like Thailand, um, uh, other Southeast Asian countries na marami indigenous peoples, Malaysia, I'm not sure if Daniel is here, but probably he can share later. Uh, they don't even recognize na meron silang indigenous population. Tayo, nasa batas natin. So, nandyan na yung Kung gusto nating tignan no, kung ano yung indigenous people's agenda, one could say na nandun yan sa batas. Ano bang sinasabi ng batas? The heart of it, again, is yung RSB na tinatawag, the right to self-determination, and collectively, yung four bundle of rights. So kung titignan nyo yung outline ng batas, na yung rights to ancestral domain, rights to self-governance and empowerment, social justice and human rights, and cultural integrity, yan yung sinasabi four bundles of rights na nandun sa IPRA. Now, in relation to research, meron akong gusto ng dalawang i-highlight na mga administrative orders no, ng NCIP. The NCIP, again, is the government body created by this uh, law para 
make sure yung implementation ng ng batas pero as mas as Dr. Mang has pointed out are they even competent to do so no are they really for the interest of indigenous peoples well that's another topic na we can spend an entire week even just to discuss that question pero may kinalaman sa research itong gusto kong lang bigyan ng pansin kasi marami sa uh, mga uh, research right now ang ito yung nagiging sabi nga ni Ma Maria di ba prohibitive sila ng research kasi may mga NCIP order and ang dami-daming case studies if you want to look at uh, look it look it up online na 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 nahihinder yung research process nila because of this uh, bureaucratic na mga steps particularly if gusto mong mag-research about IKSP and kailangan mong kumuha ng free prior and informed consent. Sabi nga din ni Ma Maria no, uh, ang ang IPRA as critically assessed by many of our anthropologists, no, Filipino anthropologists, it has become a tool for state control, no, or some scholars would say na wholesale uh, disenfranchisement siya. Kasi nga kung mining company ka dati kung wal, nung walang IPRA, marami kang kakausapin. Pero right now, punta ka na lang sa head ng tribal council nila. At yun yung sinasabi nga na yung tribal leader, nagiging tribal leader. But nonetheless, uh, double-edged sword din siya. No? Mer meron tayong batas na supposedly magpo-protect at magpo-promote ng interest ng mga katutubo. At the same time, it could also be used uh, unfortunately against them. Nabanggit na din ito ni Mama Maria na may posibleng tignan yung Ancestral Domain Sustainable Development and Protection Plan. So adds DPP sa document na kung saan nandun yung mga broadly, no? anong gustong gawin ng mga katutubo. Kasi nga sabi din ni Mama Maria, responsibility ng mga katutubo natin ngayon na pangalagaan ng kanilang Ancestral Domain. So nire-require ng batas na ilagay nila doon. So kung saan mang balak niyong gumawa ng katutubo at ah, research sa mga katutubo, tignan niyo no, baka meron silang ads DPP. Here in this photo I have the uh, the privilege of participating yung ads DPP formulation ng mga dumagat sa my Nueva Ecija uh, uh, Isabela boundary if I remember correctly no 20 kailan ba ta? Basta pre-pandemic days to. Ayun, wala pa ring mga mas no. And then uh big kasi tinagawa ko nung manual of operation sa ads DPP. So I was able to participate in this. Uh, outside, pwede rin natin tignan yung mga as I, as we have said, yung yung indigenous rights naman ay hindi localized sa atin. No? Part siya ng global social movement. So maraming mga bodies, no, international bodies na tumitingin sa uh, paano ba gawin no yung pag-aintindi sa mga katutubo at paano sila Paano i-frame yung research natin? So, in particular, meron akong gusto i-highlight lang dito is a document that is available online, no? Local Knowledge and Global Goals. And if you will see the table of contents, marami dyang nakalagay na paano siya uh, gawin. No? You, when you look at indigenous knowledge no? for sustainability, kasi ang dami na ngayon ng mga sciences na part talaga, no? built in sa research nila yung indigenous knowledge, like climate science. No? You, when you go to Canada, there, there are uh, climate stations na ang nag ay mga Nunavut no, or mga indigenous peoples in Canada and other places. So hindi na again, hindi, parang, parang passe na, no? hindi parang talagang passe na yung, yung mode of research na yung mga katutubo ay subjects lang no? na para silang ino-observe sa kanila community. So they are very much active as participants in the research and even uh, framers. And marami rin indigenous scholars by the way, even here in our country. Um, in, sa usapin naman ng karapatan, pwede nyo tignan itong International Work Group for Indigenous Affairs or IWGIA. So this is their Facebook page and you can uh, look it up easily sa Facebook and marami silang resources no, sa, uh, again, uh, usapin ng mga katutubo. So for example, meron silang nilalabas annually na Indigenous World. No? So meron available na yung 2021 para alam din natin yung ano ba yung state of affairs ng mga katutubo. Uh, across uh, different countries all throughout the globe. Dito sa Pilipinas, ito yung nabanggit ni Mama Maria kanina, part din tayo ng isang global movement to protect the ancestral domain. No? Kasi nakikita na hindi enough yung batas natin na IPRA. In fact, may sinusulungan na bill sa Kongreso para ipasa yung ICCA bill. But unfortunately, hindi siya priority ng incumbent ng government. So maraming, uh, I'm just giving you some of the avenues na pwede niyong explore para tignan yung decolonizing aspect of doing research with indigenous peoples. 
In particular, ang um, suggestion ni Dr. Mangahas, pwede natin tignan actually yung sinasabi natin indigenization, na pil- psikolohiya ng Pilipino sa possible indigenous research methods. And if you are familiar with this, uh, meron siyang sinasabi yung three core values na yung pakikipagkapwa, pakikiramdam, at bahala na. Uh, yung, yung kapwa is a very central concept sa psikolohiya ng Pilipino kasi yung, ito yung self in the other, sabi nga ni Ver Enriquez na yung we think of ourselves, di ba, yung hindi lang individual tayo na kundi in relation always to others. Yung kapwa natin. Uh, I remember growing up yung may show na kapwa ko, mahal ko, and it was just a, a popular way of depicting yung, kap, yung social relatedness natin sa isa't isa. In other words, sabi ng psikolohiya ng Pilipino, hindi tayo nag-iisip na individual na, no? yung individ, individualistic na sensibilities na common sa West na, na mga personalities sa atin, more on personhood. In relation to this, may mga kaakibat na mga konsepto no? yung pwede na i-apply sa research. No? Sabi ni sa handout ni Dr. Mangahas, pwede itong tignan na levels of social or interpersonal reaction. So pagpupunta tayo sa field, uh, nakikitungo ba tayo or what we can translate as ability, no? nakikisalamuha ba tayo or mixing, pakikilahok, joining in, or pakikibagay, conformity, pakikisama, uh, pakikipagpalagay ang loob, no? or establishing mutual trust or rapport, at pakikisangkot. Ang sabi dito, at least kung ma-achieve mo daw yung pakikisama, uh, yun na yung, or pakikipagkalagay ang loob, no? yung kaya na magbahagi ng mga, ng mga karanasan, yung mga tao na uh, pinapag-aralan mo, or... Uh, nakikipag-aral uh, ka with, ay yun na yung uh, objective, yung attainable na level. And then, pakikiisa or solidarity. So as you can see, uh, marami sa lahat ng mga terms na ito, pakiki yung, uh, yung uh, ano niya, um, affixation niya. Ang explanation ng mga linguist or nung even ng nag-aaral ng psikolohiya ng Pilipino, uh, pakiki implies yung politeness no? toward the other pa rin. Uh, pakikisama, pakikibahagi, joining or uh, doing others are doing, sharing work or stories. Again, lahat ng ito, manifestation na tayo mga Pilipino, uh, yung sinasabi nga ng mga early scholars ng Philippine Studies, iba yung uh, SIR, Smooth Interpersonal Relations. We would rather keep our ano ba, disgruntlement sa sarili natin kaysa sabihin na, oy, hindi ko gusto yung sinasabi mo uh, mas gusto natin na uh, sarili nila lang kasi we don't want to offend easily our kapwa kasi nga always relational yung pakikitungo natin sa iba. Furthermore, uh, yung mga application ng psikolohiyang Pilipino, pwede rin natin tignan and this, this will be uh, the, the last part of this talk uh, as indigenous research methods. Uh, so, doon sa project ng psikolohiyang Pilipino, meron talaga silang methodological approaches no, on how to do uh, SP, Psikolohiya ng Pilipino. So yung pakapaka pa, uh, yung feeling one's way in the dark. Di ba pag pumunta naman tayo na isang lugar na hindi natin, hindi tayo familiar, we don't act arrogantly, I hope. No? Nakiki, nakikikapa ka pa sa paligid mo kung anong sino ba ang uh, leader dito no? without even asking kasi na, nalalaman mo ang community dynamics at the surface through pakapaka pa. And then, nagtatanong-tanong ka, no? uh, kumusta po kayo, kumusta nga ano ninyo, anong kinabubuhay ng mga tao dito, ganyan. So, para incremental din siya, gradual na, na, na stages. No? And then, eventually, makikipagkwentuhan ka. So, karamihan, uh, uh, ano ito, uh, ano tawag, appealing sa mga anthropologists kasi hindi kasi ayaw yung, yung pakiki, nakikiugaling pagmamasig yung nakalagay dyan sa gitna is uh, Ponsiano Benagan's translation of participant observation na na-explain yesterday na mas gusto ng mga anthropologists yung unobtrusive na methods, yung hindi pupunta ka doon tapos mag interview ka na. You know. More of a smooth siya na process, no? hindi yung abrupt and um, obtrusive na, na na process. So dumadalaw, pagdalaw-dalaw, pakikisama, panunuluyan, pakikipamuhay, and so on. And if I remember correctly nga yung metaphor ni Dr. Gieb, di ba? Uh, ang, ang ethnography is a sort of commitment. Uh, kung kaya mo ba siyang mahalin in, in one year pa yata yung limit ni Dr. Jeb. So, hindi talaga madali, in other words, no, yung, in, in a sense, doing ethnography because it entails a lot of uh, giving up our personal comforts just to do research. No? 
uh, when you go to communities. Some principles, uh, last na sa part ng Sikulohiyang Pilipino, again, galing sa handout ni Dr. Mga, sabi niya, research topics should be relevant to the people being studied. No? As we have seen, kung gusto natin mag-research sa mga indigenous peoples, tapos ang agenda pala natin na hindi naman akma sa anong gusto nilang mangyari, ay may problema yun. It should, it should be considered as problematic. Ang welfare at interest ng mga research participant takes precedence, and I hope this, uh, this will be highlighted, of course, sa ethics module na uh, mapag-uusapan uh, in the future next week. Um, and, and then I hope uh, we will ask questions as uh, uh, asked by Dr. Mangas earlier na itanong natin no, ang ethics question about technology. Also, the process of getting data is, is as important as in get, getting the data. Ito pr probably yung connect sa sinasabi ni Dr. Gerb yesterday in critical self reflexivity no yung mga anthropologists hindi lang kasi data miner no uh, we we put attention to the process how it unfolds no kung halimbawa na tanong mo sa ano ba yung nangyari was it uh, your positionality mo as a researcher meaning you are a, a person employed in a university with relatively uh, greater privilege than an indigenous person who has uh, more or less a, a social economically disadvantage. So anthropologists, ethnographers uh, pay attention to this. The research methodology should be appropriate to cultural norms. The method is not disruptive. The method adjusts to the people. So kaya, kaya gustong gusto ng mga anthropologists yung nakikiugaling pagmamasid kasi part, ina-attempt mo maging part ng community. Hindi ka pupunta doon ng uh, mag interview po ako ng alas 9 to alas 10 sa inyo. So, nadi-disrupt yung trabaho niya. No? Uh, whereas, pwede kang makitulog no? as, as we have experienced and shared uh, last uh, yesterday no? sa bahay ng no, mga informants uh, para makita mo yung context kung saan sila uh, nabubuhay. Research participants may have an input in the process of research, halimbawa sa time management, so in, in many in many times I've encountered this no na ayaw nila magpa-interview kasi or makipagkwentuhan kasi meron silang ginagawa and you have to respect that no because uh, it's their time that you are taking uh, paano ba yung mga tanong di ba usually pinopropose natin sa sa research proposal these are the questions to be asked but meron bang say yung mga community yung mga tao na pag-aaralan na pag-aaralan ng research na yon sa how you restructure the questions Researchers must possess pakiki ramdam, no? Or know how to ask personal questions, when to leave, how to interpret yes and no. So sa pakiki ramdam natin, madalas hindi nga tayo directly saying no or yes right to people. Uh, through pakiki ramdam, alam na natin na ayaw niyang makausap, no? Or hindi niya gusto pag-usapan yung topic na yan, kasi sensitive. Without even saying na uh, or asking the informant or the interlocutor na uh, yes or no. And then uh, the language of the people should be language of the research. That's why I think it's very important that you, that you yourselves are the researchers, no? because you can you can you you speak the language, and therefore you know the cultural nuances of that uh, community that where it is uh, where you are doing your study. And then, as if ethnography is a commitment, many of the personal connections are established. And until now, no, uh, friends, parin yung mga research ano, sometimes nagiging minang minong yung anthropologists kasi hindi na research or research yung uh, connection between the yeah, participants of the research so your concepts na reciprocity caring sharing and solidarity all right so as a way of concluding i will i will leave you some questions to ponder and i hope again that uh, in decolonizing research with indigenous peoples we we are willing to face these difficult questions uh, in doing so. So in conducting research with the indigenous peoples of Camarines Norte, what is our agenda by in the first place? In the research process, are we attentive to the structures of power and control that shape our fra framing and imagination of the other? Or just like what the Manila fame did, no? we are replicating the errors of the past. Are there synergies between our research agenda and indigenous peoples' plight and rights? And what methods of collaboration will take place? And I am borrowing this question from one of the references. Who, who speaks for whom, where, and how? And on that, maraming salamat po sa pakikinig. I sana ay 
okay pa kayo. At ito yung uh, topic natin sa methods of collaboration, decolonizing research with indigenous peoples. Just mabalos. Thank you very much to Jesse Vargas Jr. and Ma'am Maria Mangahas. So, uh, do we have questions from our participants for the Q&A? Let's check po. Actually, some of the questions are already answered. Wala na yata, sir and ma'am. <laughs> Tinitignan ko ngayon siya. Apo. Okay. Well, puro pa kasi ito comment sa Bravo and Agay. So, that's it. Thank you very much again to our resource speakers on Indigenous people of the Philippines, Sir Jesse Vargas Jr. and Maria Mga, Dr. Maria Mangas. All right. So for the awarding of certificate of appreciation, commendation to our resource speaker. May I read? Certificate of commendation is awarded to Maria Mangas in grateful recognition of her distinguished and invaluable service rendered as resource person during the Doing Ethnography Seminar Workshop held on, on July 16 and thereby contributing immeasurably to the prestige and success of the event. Given the 16th day of July 2021, signed the Director Freddy T. Bernal Ceso III, our OIC President. I think we have one question in the chat, but, this, uh, but anyway, let us let me just continue. Same certificate is awarded to Jesse Vargas Jr. All right, so we have our virtual awarding of certificate of commendation to our two resource speaker. By the way, say, sir, I have seen one question here in the chat box. Uh, let me read from Sir Abner Jose Villar from the College of Arts and Sciences. How do you conduct ethnography study on IPs where the environment is hostile, meaning infested by rebels? Okay, mm -hmm. sir or ma'am, Mary? My article, oh, yeah. uh, you, you want to, my uh, silang sakin. My article, C. Uh, Gus, got my turn about a situation like that. I can share it. Um, tapos, I'll just share that in one time I led a field school sa Antipolo. Tapos, nung nagpapaalam kami sa, sa community. Nagpapaalam kami sa community. Ang sabi na, na um, local sabi nila, magpaalam kayo sa mayor, ganyan governor. And then they also said, uh, tapos kami ng bahala magpaalam dun sa those other people. And then it turned out that there were NPA in the area. Pero yung community yung naging bahala sa kanila. Um, later on, uh, in the middle and toward the end of our fieldwork, dumad while we were there, dumad may dumadaan na military, but they didn't, we didn't have any encounters with them until toward the end. And that was the only time where I felt um, I'm glad we're leaving already. <laughs> um, but in general, ganun ne. So parang you feel for saan ba dapat magpaalam? Tapos kung, kung yung, the community will know best. And then if they also say dapat sa military magpaalam din kayo, we would have also done that. Yeah, that's the key question, I guess. Na yung, saan ba dapat magpaalam? Kasi bureaucratically, the law compels us na humingi na FBI, si ganyan. Pero ay, dapat muna talaga for me, dun sa mga tao, no? kasi dun naman magsisimula. Kasi kung magpapaalam ka, for instance, unang-una sa mayor, ganyan, tapos papasok ka sa community, mas magiging uh, parang outsider yung dating mo, no? Uh, so, hindi siya something na, uh, as I have experienced, like I remember sa, ang MA thesis ko kasi sa Agusan del Sur sa Mindanao, no, and meron akong, akong isang key informant, ang dami niyang alam, no, and tapos, so lagi akong nakikipag uh, kausap sa kanya. Eventually, I found out na dati pala siyang NPA, no, kaya marami siyang alam sa community, marami siyang alam sa ano, but uh, uh, dati, no, hindi na siya active sa, sa movement. 
So I I guess uh, again the, the the main question should be kanino ba dapat magpaalam? So yung tanong kung gusto nating mag-research dapat magpaalam muna sa sa komunidad kasi kung in the first place kung ayaw nila kung mas kanino mo gusto magpaalam kung ayaw ng community wala ring mangyayari. It will just be an antagonistic relationship. Uh, permission to speak sa mga facilitators. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of Camarines Norte, we have worked out a memorandum of agreement with uh, some municipalities. No? And we also have a memorandum of cooperation with the NCIT. So probably that, he, that would be a sort of shortening the process. Now, the only thing left for the researchers would be to tell the community. Because in terms of mga iba pang mga bagay-bagay, inasikaso na ng Office of the Vice President for Research and Extension. So what would happen would be for the researchers to signify their interest to do research in some communities and get the permission of the uh, IPs in those communities. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Paul. And then we have another one question, sir and ma'am, from Dr. Jocelyn Trinidad of the College of Arts and Sciences. In terms of education and capability building, can we give an example po of sustainable projects implemented derived from research findings or recommendations which had an impact to an IP community? Um, siguro may share ko dito yung um, recently concluded project ko uh, sa UKLB. No? Uh, we were doing um, climate change impacts sa mga agri-fishery communities. No? Uh, some of our sites were indigenous peoples. So gaya nung sinabi ni Dr. Mangahas kanina, hindi lang yung NCIT yung ahensya ng gobyerno na may, may ugnayan no, sa mga katutubo. Marami rin, halimbawa DNR, um, DTI nga, or even yung DOT tourism, may more relationship. So pwedeng ganun din yung pasok natin. No? Kasi kung may establish, hindi naman yung mga katutubo ay detached from the outside world. So meron silang relationship with NGOs, meron silang relationship with government line agencies. So kung may existing na, na relationship na ganun, pwedeng doon tayo pumasok. So in terms of example of sustainable projects, uh, pwedeng ganun yung tignan, no? yung, yung community mismo yung nagpapatakbo ng ng project na uh, being implemented by government agency. As we know, projects are largely dependent on resources, ibig sabihin pera. So, nagiging sustainable madalas kapag merong funding na available. So, saan ba usually galing ang pera? Uh, madalas, in my experience, sa mga government institutions that I mentioned, including uh, some foreign aid in mga development aid. Uh, baka yung ibang participant ay ma-share din. Thank you very much, Sir Jesse. So may I request everyone to please turn on your video for documentation, please, before we end the morning session. Uh, Ma'am Grace, may announcement yes, ako po. after the yes, photo. May announcement ako before the photo documentation. Thank okay. you. So let's have a picture. Everyone, please turn on your video. Three, ano po tayo? Three shots. Okay, one, two, three. Next, po, one, two, three. And that last one, one, two, three. Thank you, Ma'am Jo. Solo, Ma solo. Nakamute pa, Ma'am Jo. Kamute. Okay, sorry. Um, I keep on forgetting to turn on the mic. <laughs> Uh, for this afternoon, bad news, there will be power interruption in Daet and some municipalities in Camarines Norte. But not to worry, not to worry. Uh, the emergency power uh, will be turned on at CNSC. Uh, na notify na yung ating uh, administrator and uh, there will be emergency power provided. The second one will be, uh, we will be posting a link for the Google Forms for visual ethnography. Please uh, fill it out para mas maganda yung magiging discussion ng visual ethnography kasi uh, i, marami yung mga tanong sila. Uh, you will be providing information in terms of your interest sa visual ethnography. Uh, this, the link will be provided in the chat and as well as uh, uh, I will probably ask Amiyong to give me the link and I will post it sa GC naman ng mga participants. Um, 
Any other questions you may have, please put it in the chat box and in the GC of participants. Now, for this afternoon session, you have been grouped as per the request of uh, the facilitators. There will be nine groupings. Unfortunately, for some, they did not select any group. So we put them in some groups needing, uh, needing participants. So may, may mga marami kasing pumunta doon sa isang group. Siguro dahil maikli yung readings. Joke. <laughs> Trabaho ko rin po kasi ito nung estudyante. Ako doon ako sa pinakamadali. <laughs> pero pero uh, so yung mga groups, yung mga hindi po nag-select, okay, nilagay namin doon sa uh, group po na kakonti yung nag-select. And uh, I hope uh, it will be a worthwhile discussion this afternoon. Uh, we remain very enthusiastic. And by the way, for those, uh, for the UGAT members who have missed the sessions yesterday, morning and afternoon, uh, we will be providing the link to UGAT of the recorded uh, Zoom uh, links no, sa uh, ating uh, session yesterday. And today is also being recorded, so it will also be provided to UGAT uh, for your uh, for postings at the uh, website. Uh, any other question, please let me know. Thank you very much, uh, Maria and uh, Jesse. Very, very deeply grateful. Ano po si Jesse sa kasi Maria sikat na sikat yan sa mga anthropologists. You know why? Maria is the editor in chief of the Ugat Journal, and Jesse is the executive director. Kahit na nung problema na Ugat itanong mo kay Jesse, alam niya kung paano sagutin. So uh, these two are very, very popular among. Uh, the anthropologists of the Philippines. Thank you very much, uh, Maria and Jesse. Grateful thank for you. your country. Thank you po. Salamat. Salamat. Once again, thank, thank you, you very you. much, Ma Maria and Sir Jesse. And of course, to everyone, our participants, and to all UGAT members. See you all again later this afternoon at 1 p.m. We'll start at 1 p.m. Bye. Have a lunch time, everyone. request. He tells the procurement office what and when to purchase.